Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the DPPG Sports Show! In this corner, coming from Central New Hampshire, Dan Cullen! In this corner over here, originating from New Jersey, Mr. Michael Foley! And standing in the middle of it all, coming from Long Island, New York, the DP and DPP gene, Devin Poslusky! How's that for an intro? It's pretty good. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the music, so. Yeah, I figured it would be like the best way to like introduce how this is going like, to be like an all-out grudge match. Originally from New Jersey, huh? Well, isn't that where you're from? Went to high school in Vermont. Can't, I'm so can't confused. Throw shade I don't even Vermont. know where you, went you are. Went to college in Vermont. Yeah, but I was born on Long Island. Did you hear that? <laughs> I was born on Long Island. Are you guys really making it. fun of me already? He's got to put that accent in he there. You know? you gotta, you gotta I was kidding. on Long Island last night. Flew into La LaGuardia. I'm sorry. It was good. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, hey everybody, welcome to the brand new podcast. Here, we're still working on that name. PPG Sports Show. I don't even know. We'll come up with something that's probably a little better. I don't know. But uh, Devin Potts, last name here. We got Mr. Mike Foley and Howdy. Dan Kern. Good Am I saying your last name right, by the way? Kernan, yep. Kernan, yep. all right. Yep. All right, close enough. Um, so for those of you who don't know, I'm the owner of DP Production Group, Coach Foley here, boy soccer coach at Belmont. Also, he's involved in everything at Belmont. And uh, Dan, also the boy soccer coach at Inch Lakes. And baseball coach. Woohoo! Yeah. And uh, yeah, this is going to be fun. Finals, baby, last year. It was. It was, a, it was a very fun spring. Very, very awesome. fun spring. But uh, yeah, so really, let, let's explain what we're thinking here, which I don't even know if we're all on the same page, but um, kind of sort of something like where every week we'd have a recap of what happened last week, and that would be the first couple minutes, and then the last couple minutes we'll be looking ahead, and then. Maybe not this week, but in the middle, there'd be like a topic, like talking about whatever we wanted this, whatever we want to talk about. So, yeah. um, obviously, right now, maybe the recast will change a little bit because these two are in season, and then in a couple of weeks, you won't be. So, coming into the winter and the spring and all maybe that. Maybe we won't be. Well, I'm sorry, in a month or so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sorry, I'll adjust that's the timeline. Wishful thinking. Right, right. I know, right? But I hope a month from now. I was going to say, for, well, okay, maybe. <laughs> Month and a half, then. Right. I'll make sure we're way out of season. Yeah, five or six weeks, probably. Yeah, yeah, exactly. When we're looking at basketball season. But anyways. Basketball. I know, right? That's like... Before it'll be here, before you know it. I know. Don't want to think about that, though. No. I got so much work ahead we're of me. We're still in season. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's where we want to be. Even though it was snowing when Dan went up to Berlin. Yeah, it was. They uh, Berlin was talking about getting snow at the end of the week, early uh, end of the weekend. So <laughs> I'm glad we got up there when we did. That is yeah. for sure. Yeah. So let's um let's talk about last week's sports, and I guess starting with the the newbie out of the group here, Mr. Interlakes. Uh yeah. I mean, we're finishing off a little bit of a lull in our in our schedule. Like we've played a lot of the tough teams in Division Three, and not that you know uh, Berlin and Kearsarge are not one of the top teams in division three, but you know, we had a long track that went up to Berlin. They're a playoff team trying to get into that bottom, bottom section. It was a must win for us. And, uh, first half was back and forth. I've had some kids banged up. They're not feeling well. Like most people, I think at this point in the season, um, second half, we were able to get a goal in the first seven or eight minutes of the game. And then the second half, we just dominated. We moved the ball. Well, we were all over the place. I don't necessarily think, Berlin had too many chances to to do anything of any opportunity so it was nice to go up there and and beat Berlin a good a good program that that was probably the first time we've ever won up there since I've taken the program over nice yeah. awesome Congrats. were they uh how how were they defensively for you <laughs> Fully, I'm fully scouting. Play, I'm I, scouting. Full disclosure. I'm scouting. <laughs> uh, I got them in two weeks but it's you know uh, they play a back four but it's fairly flat um, we, we basically attacked one kid cause we just kind of knew that that was probably going to be the weaker spot to, to go through and, and it worked. And that was the, you know, the one goal that we scored was on that, on that person that we were trying to, uh, you know, focus on. And the second half, I just know, I, I don't necessarily know if they're missing a lot of starters or if they're in the same, you know, not feeling well 
um, wagon, but they we you could tell there were a couple guys that were asking for subs. Like yeah. we were we were running them to exhaustion, yeah. and that for us has been the goal all year. Is if you can continuously move the ball and get the other team to to you know raise their hand and be like, coach, I need one. That's that means you're doing something well. Right. And in the first half, that wasn't what we were doing. It was a lot of kick and kick and chase, and yeah. Berlin handled that. Um, second half, they they fell back into the into the eighteen, and their goalie's good. Their goalie's got a lot of length. He's athletic, but he's which, beatable. Which is a trademark for for Berlin. I mean, they they've always have had outstanding goalies, and you just oh, yeah. you just go, all right, they they found another one, uh, yeah. or they trained another one, and yeah, and, that, and that's that that's again has been the you know the thing you try to figure out when you particularly going there. Um, which is not a, it's not an easy place to, it's not a fun bus ride. That's no. for sure. No. <laughs> no. And you know, being, but. being one of the closer division three schools, both Berlin and white mountain, we seem to get the short straw to go up there yeah. every year. I think we went up to white mountain in Berlin last year. We'll probably go again next year too. Yeah. So yeah, I've yet to go up to Berlin. I don't know if it's like one of those bucket list list schools for me. But at the same time, I'm not. Honestly, it's <laughs> it's the way that their their field sits in this kind of bowl, and it, it it's a beautiful it's a beautiful spot mm-hmm. to to watch a, a, a soccer game. Um, it's just it you know for us it's a you know it's a two hour bus ride right. up there, which is which is fine. You know, if Berlin travels to us, they're oh, on yeah. a bus for two hours. Oh, if, all the time, yeah. And yeah. and they're used to that. And for a lot of us. Out of the Lakes region, we, you know, this year we had to go to, we went to White Mountains, we went to Fall Mountain, um, and then, you know, our last game of the season, we get to travel to, to Berlin. And so, uh, we, <laughs> for a three o'clock start before it gets dark. Yeah, <laughs> we're a 3 30 start. And then I'm going, and I was asking Devin earlier, I'm like, like I got to find out if they have a JV team because we're going to try, try. They, to, they had one when we went up there. It was, a, it was, they're they're kind of in the same boat as a lot of other D threes. Yeah. Is they've got probably twenty seven or twenty eight kids, so yeah. they have a handful that are that are playing both. So they, I think they had thirteen or fourteen yeah. at that point. But yeah, and that, and so that that'll add to our 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 drive our drive time. Yeah, I think. I mean, we started. <laughs> at, we had a three thirty start. Didn't go to overtime. Thank God. Um, and the var- I think the JV game started maybe ten or ten or twelve minutes after yeah. the varsity game. We got back at eight thirty. Yeah, but I mean that's that's normal yeah. part for the course when you're traveling outside of the the Lakes region area. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Now, I mean, for us it would be different because we're not on a bus. But still, I don't know if I want to drive up two hours because it'd be my luck. I drive two hours and watch a blowout <laughs> and think. Okay. That's, that's yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're covering a Lakes region team, I mean, that's, yeah, no. in, yeah, that's in, true. in your niche, that's kind of what you're looking for. Like, yeah, obviously you want the competitive game that, right. you know, very well ends one nothing or 2-1. I was going to say, when I saw the score for your game, I was like, dang it, I should have went up. I, 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 like, tried. I tried. I know you I did. I know. Up there. <laughs> I know. And, in, and like Foley said, I mean, it's it's a beautiful scenery when you're up there. Yeah. Like the, I mean, you've got the hill in the back where all the fans are for the most part. And you can kind of see there's a ton of foliage there. They've got the mountains in the background. Like it's a nice, it's a nice place to watch a game. The baseball feels the same way, but yeah. I mean, if the only, the only bad thing about it is, yeah, it's a little bit of a, it's a little yeah. bit of a trek, but yeah. it's not the worst. It's not one of the worst trips I've ever done. Right. That's, That's for true. sure. That's true. I'm, I'm the one over here saying, I don't want to go to Berlin, but I'll go to Rutland, Vermont for a game. <laughs> and the, it's just as bad. <laughs> well, you just know, as far, I should say. Go, going out to Fall Mountain this year, we as as we're getting on the bus, it it's it's pouring rain <laughs> on the way all the way. It rained all the way there, and the whole time I'm thinking, are we even going to play? Are, you know, we're going to drive two hours and get there, and the field's going to be unplayable, and then we're going to go. All right, guys, back on the bus. This, this, this was our, our practice today. And uh, and we get there. We get off the bus. It's still raining. Five minutes after we get off the bus, it stops. There was a break in the clouds. Sun tried to come out. It didn't. Field was wet the whole game. Um, you know, we ended up we ended up pulling out a, a you know, one nothing win uh, over there. Um, but on my way back, I'm, I'm texting uh, – Scott Zipke from Hopkinton, and he was like, they were at Monadnock, and he goes, it was the just 
torrential, torrential rain the whole game. They had to call the game early uh, because it was just raining so bad. Well, and it was like, I don't know how we missed. Yeah. Well, that's how it was when we opened the season. We, we played that first Friday. We went up oh. to White Mountain. Right. And we were on the highway, thunderstorms, pouring rain. Like, I'm following you as your guys are getting ready to take on Guilford to yeah. start the season. And, and our assistant coach and I, we're, we're talking back and forth. And we're like, are we really driving up to White Mountain in the pouring rain to have the same outcome? Like, all right, we'll just get on the bus and turn around. Like, yeah, it was a good time to leave work early. <laughs> and uh, we get up there, same thing. You know, it's a double overtime game. We end up, you know, sneaking out one nothing. Our JV guys play 15 minutes, and then there's a bolt of lightning. We get on the bus, and we go home. Yeah. <laughs> and it's the same thing. Like, we were one of the only teams in the entire state, yeah. regardless of division, that played that day. Yeah, right. right. I, mean, I remember I went to Laconia that day just to spectate field hockey, and I was thinking to myself, how, how are we missing this? Like, I'm watching the dark clouds over near Guilford, Belmont, up in Meredith area, and I'm like, how is it just completely splitting Laconia? Yeah. And it's, di- and it's, you know, the fall is such a different breed because, you know, we're fortunate enough to have turf at home. So if there's a home game and there's a little bit of rain, there's not even a thought of, right. of cancellation. Whereas in the spring, I mean, you have to basically, if you're not having perfect conditions, most of the time your, your baseball game is, is postponed or rained right. out. And in the, so- and, you know, in the fall with soccer, I mean, I've played a game in pouring rain, grass and turf. Like we've played in, you know, snow, freezing, you know, freezing weather. I mean, I've gone the last few times we went up to White Mountain, it's been raining or cold yeah. or 45 degrees, regardless if it's August or, yeah. you know, October. So it wasn't, it's just a different, fall is a completely different animal. That is for sure. Yeah, for sure. Laconia and Interlakes are our two, like, I'm so glad that we have them as turf fields. Because, like, if it's a day like today where it's raining, they're, they're the first two schedules I look at. I'm like, okay, where are they, who's playing on the turf? Right. Because, like you said, nine times out of ten, that game's happening, regardless of what mother nature is doing. Yeah. And I mean, it's not, it's not the most unenjoyable time to play in the pouring rain. If you have the turf option, right? Like I've gone and played in the, you know, I've coached in some grass games that are, that are raining. I mean, we played, um, Hopkinton in a quarterfinal a few years ago at NHTI and it was pouring and it was not really that enjoyable, but <laughs> on the turf, it's not so bad. Like you just kind of like forget that it's raining at times because you're not standing in a constant puddle. Right. Right. Hey, it makes for good TV. I'll say that. Yeah, coming hey. from the guy who's sitting in his Good trailer. Plug. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tra- trailer with the space heater on. My cameraman's freezing, but you know it's fine. It's not necessarily so warm in that trailer. Just yeah, pointing right. that out at the Lions Cup game a couple of years ago. Well, okay. It was cold. I didn't have the heater Rainy. on for you. I'm sorry. There it is. He didn't pull out all the stuff. Yeah, no. sorry. Just when you think you're special. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> now we see how it is. Yeah. My bad. My bad. Um, cool. Well, anything. Anything else for Interlakes? I know you guys played Kearsarge. We, we were did. talking we about that a, pregame or pre-show. We had a tough one against Kearsarge. I mean, they're good. They're a really, really good team. Like like we talked about earlier, I mean, we've played Guilford twice. We have Belmont. Uh, Prospect Mountain's a good Belmont's okay three. this year. Kinda, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> he, he fooled me because <laughs> yeah. I, I saw him play against Plymouth in the preseason. I'm like, oh, we should have a chance. And then it's 5 nothing. And I'm like, oh, man, we didn't have a chance at all. <laughs> and, I mean, but we've played you know, Belmont, Guilford. We got them again. We've got – we had St. Thomas and Brady. It's back to back. We've you know, all the way for the most part. Um, and Kearsar just fits into that same another really good Division Three team that you know we scored early um, and then we kind of just tried to survive. And 60 minutes is a long, or 60, 65, 70 minutes is a long time to try to survive with one goal lead. Um, and the second half, Kearsar was just a whole lot better than us. And you know they were they were tough. They were physical. Our guys got into it with them a little bit. Um, no, I'll leave it at that. Um, <laughs> Again, but, made for good TV on yeah, DPPG. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure it was fantastic <laughs> to watch, but on the sidelines, it was very hectic and, yeah. and stressful. Um, but, you know, it's just another one of those those tough, tough schedules that we had this year. I don't know who made it, but I don't necessarily think I made too many friends with that with that <laughs> athletic director who, who was picking the schedules for D3. I used to know who did it, and it, ch- it changed. My understanding is it changed because – it's interesting. Yeah. He's, I mean, he's I'm, admitting on video right now that he's like, well, I used to know him, you know, little had the pocket well, here. You know, what's, what's funny is it, <laughs> uh, it, it used to be the athletic director from Hopkinton who did uh, boys division three. And, and he, he used to live right around the corner from me in, in uh, Pentecook. Um, and one day, you know, I think in December, I'm, I'm out at the, 
grocery store in Concord and I run into him and this is probably seven, eight years ago. And I, and I, he goes, he goes, Hey, how's it going? I'm like, great. You know, blah, blah, blah. I go, Hey, are you doing the schedule? He's like, yeah. I go, I want to play a competitive <laughs> schedule. And he's like, what do you mean? I go, I go, no offense. I go, but at the time, Franklin was still in our division. And I said, look, I go, I, I don't want to play Franklin. I go, yeah. granted, they're right next door to us, but we are going to get nothing out of that. Yeah, game. it helps your record, but it does, doesn't do a whole lot for you in the tail end when you're trying to, right. you know, right. what we're all trying to do is compete to win a championship, right. but it doesn't help you at the end. Right. So the following year, I, I, had, I had a very competitive schedule, but I had a team that could handle a competitive schedule. And um, it was like a couple of years later, I was like, I'm like, oh, no, because <laughs> oh, no. I graduated away, you know, a, a super talented group of guys. Yeah, like 30 kids in two yeah. years. <laughs> and then I was like, uh, I'm going to I'm going to eat those words. And uh, <laughs> last year we did. Uh, it was you know, definitely one of those seasons where uh, we played all the top teams. And yeah. and it was a, a rough year, <laughs> uh, to say the least. And uh, yeah. Well, and I keep trying to tell myself because. You know, we played well last year, and I graduated, you know, five kids, and they were great kids, and, like, trying to think, like, uh, they'd be not necessarily easily replaceable, but, like, you can get maybe one or two kids to fill that role, and you're like, ah, it'll be okay. And then at the beginning of the year, like, I'm looking at the schedule, I'm like, yeah, I think we could get, like, eight or nine. Like, that'll be the first time that, you know, that's happened in a long time. And then we get, like, four or five games into it, and I'm like, I'm starting, you know, seven kids with less than 12 games varsity experience in the fall. <laughs> And it's just like an eye-opening experience where I'm just like, all right, where it's another 5 nothing defeat. Like, got to just kind of take a step back and be like, I'm starting a ton of sophomores who have very limited experience. Yeah. So right. we're in that same boat where it's like, yeah, we got Belmont, or Belmont, Guilford, Brady, uh, St. Thomas, and Prospect Mountain in a stretch. And yeah. one of those was a home game. Wow. So it was, it was one of those kind of things where we're like, all right, well, if we can sneak in, we'll be in good shape because we played a lot of those tough teams on the road, on the road. Yeah. And then at the same time, it's like, are we going to be able to sneak in? Right. Because we played some of those tough, we've played so many tough teams and the result just hasn't gone our way yeah. Yeah. yet. Hopefully we've got four left. Hopefully we can steal, steal two, two of the last four. There you if go. you can win the next four this way, you have a home game. That'd be even better for us. Just saying, just saying. Well, I mean, that would be yeah. ideal, but yeah, I don't uh, think Interlakes has beaten Guilford soccer in the entire <laughs> history. You never of, know. And uh, any given Sunday, yeah, right? Any <laughs> Any given Tuesday or Thursday, I think. Yeah. That day. Uh, <laughs> it's, <laughs> I so it, it's it's funny because we we I think all of us as coaches um, joke, chide one another um, when it comes to Guilford, and um, you know th this is my twenty third year of coaching, and uh, and I and I say this respectfully, um, I, I've only beaten Guilford ten times. And two of those are playoff games. And so you go, uh, how in the, you, you fight, kick, scratch, and claw to, to find ways in the years that you think you have a team that's going to compete with them. Something happens. Something strange <laughs> happens. And that you Gil just go, that Whoa. Guilford puck luck that they use with that, like, you know, with hockey all the time, yeah. they get a ball off the post that goes out of bounds for you yeah. is in the back of the net for them. Yeah. And I mean, I've been doing it for, oh, this is year eight as a varsity coach. And like, we've tied Guilford twice. Yeah. And that's a good result for us right. because, <laughs> you know, if you go back 30, 35 years, there's a lot like, there are a whole lot less one or two nothing games. And there's a whole lot of six, seven, eight nothing games. Right. And there are just teams that like you think like, oh yeah, well, we'll be close or Guilford's down, yeah. <laughs> which for them is still a 10 win team. Yeah. Right. And you're like, yeah, they'll be yeah. down. Like it'll be competitive. And you go there and it's, you know, three, nothing, 20 minutes in. You're like, what on earth <laughs> can we do to try to like yeah. bridge this gap a little bit? Yeah. And <laughs> Nothing. Tim yeah. ha Tim Howard isn't saving our isn't saving our team if <laughs> we're not playing saving Guilford. Some of those yeah. shots. That's no, for sure. No, that team is a is a powerhouse yeah. yet again. Yeah, I mean they're a powerhouse ra all around, like you guys are saying. Because we had them at Prospect. I remember I went up to Coach Pinkham and I'm like, "Hey, so how's it going?" And he was like, "Oh, we're missing one of our main guys." And he's like, "I'm just looking to survive." And I'm like, in my head, I'm going, "Wait a minute, what? What did you just say?" But then. 
they wound up beating them six nothing. And I'm like, that's surviving. That was a made for TV moment, right? Yeah, literally. Like I was like, I was like, wait a minute, how did that surviving? Like, yeah. Well, real realistically, the worst thing that could have absolutely happened to Division Three was when Dave retired, because now he has more time to just put energy, you know, from the golf course right to right to practice. I mean, he's got. He's got all that extra time to just kind of figure out ways to, to become even more dominant. Yeah, he said he spent an entire day on our website once just reviewing game film. I'm like, okay. I I credit I like Dave and I are, are really good friends, and you know I've for years worked with him at uh, Capital Kickers, which was a, a summer soccer camp him and his brother did in Concord, and you know. Prior to becoming the the head coach, you know, I would I'm looking and I'm trying to figure out, okay, you know, how do you do this? How do you run this drill? How do you get the most out of things? And then when I became the head coach, yeah, I, you know, we were at a soccer camp in the summer, and I I went to him and I said, I go look, you know, I got to build this program. I got to find a way to build it. And I go, there's no better person to go to than than you. So, what do you do? And just tight lipped, wouldn't say a word. And I was like, I'm like, okay, <laughs> thanks, I guess. But, uh, but it wasn't until, uh, you know, my, uh, we just, I, I truly lucked out early on and, and had just a, a, a super committed group of young men. Um, so in 2004, we ran, we ran the table. I mean, we, we, we were undefeated. And in the first time we played Guilford, um, it was our homecoming game, and we beat them. I think it was it was one nothing, um, or it was two one it, um, in oh four. And then uh, we go to their homecoming, um, we beat them two one there. And you know, and I was like, oh my god, we beat! I just beat Guilford. We just beat Guilford, <laughs> and not once but twice. Yeah. And then uh, you know we get to the playoffs and lo and behold we meet them in the semifinals and i'm going oh my god this is the biggest game ever and <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> we scored on a on a breakaway and and held on and beat him one nothing and it's like and he's beat him he's beat him seven times since then <laughs> this, right right and you think about that and that's why i was like you know we've you, when you beat them in a, in a season it's it's usually you beat them twice um and then that's, but th- those end up being like their only two losses. And yeah. you're like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, um, I mean, it's the same thing if you look at your schedule. Yeah. Like, you guys only have, what, two losses right now? Yeah. And they're both to Guilford. To Guilford. Yeah. I mean, it's it, not that I, you know, standings watch or do a lot of like seeing who's played who because it's still like, still a little bit, a couple weeks away from where I, like I have to really get into it. But it's wild, like when you look at those teams that like only have two or three losses, and it's the, you know, Guilford Campbell. Yeah, that's it. It's, you know, they're beating, they're losing to the team, or even to like you guys, like yeah. they're losing to the teams that are at the top three, four, five, and it's like, right. and they're they're hand, like we we the first game well ended up being the second game of the season for us. Um, we we were down three nothing at the half, and and they were all just I mean beautiful goals. And, you know, we at halftime, all we could talk about was, you know, look, you've got to go out in the second half and win the second half. That's that's we're so early in the season. The end result doesn't matter. You yeah. just got to go out. You got to play well. You got to figure some things out. And uh, we scored off a set piece, which was a, a gorgeous goal. And I was like, I'm like, I'm like, all right, take that. You know, it's, <laughs> you know whatever. It's, you know, it's three one. And and you just you know, look down the Guilford bench and they were livid. Over the fact that we scored, and but it was just a perfect, well placed ball, uh, far post header back across the goal into the corner, and uh, and they just it was I think they were content at three nothing, and then we scored made it three one and they just took it up a notch, and it, we held on. They scored another goal, so we we tied the yeah, second tied half. The second half yeah. But it was you know it was a four one final, and it could have been. Uh, seven eight, yeah, one yeah. because they he just unleashed these guys. Um, and so the second time when we played them uh, at their homecoming, um, we gave up all we talked about uh, in leading up to that game was you can't let Guilford on the board early. You can't you can't give up the early goal. You gotta if you can you can hang with them for that first fifteen minutes. 
we'll we'll be in a good position. We can we can battle. We can fight and and find try to find a way. Um, four minutes into the game, we gave up a goal, and it and it was a, it was a soft goal. And you just we just went, okay, this is this is going to be an adventure. And and to to credit my guys, uh, my lord, did we battle? But we battled, we battled, and uh, we missed missed a couple of really wide open chances, which you just you can't you when you're get. playing a good team like Guilford or get. anybody at the top. You have to basically bury yeah. those and and when when you get them, you got to put them away. And and a team like Guilford doesn't give up gifts. Right. And so when the gift a- appeared, we were like, oh, oh my god. <laughs> and so you're like, well. Uh, but yeah, that that game ended up being a you know a three nothing game and. Uh, uh, and it and it felt like a three nothing game again, except for the fact that we had we had chances, yeah. and that's kind of from the coaching standpoint. You go, all right, that that's what we were looking for. We created chances, we forced them into some bad decisions, which never ever happens, you know, with them defensively. Right. Um, his his goalkeeper um, isn't tested uh, that often, and this kid made made. A, an unbelievable highlight reel of a, if we said earlier, you know, a, a Tim Howard. Uh, well, he had Tim Howard because this kid laid out completely to his right and stopped the shot from from Liam Waldron. And I was like, I mean, that's a, oh my God. <laughs> no, I mean, when you get a good shot <clears throat> off <clears throat> against a good team like that, and you're like, oh, that one's definitely in the back of the net. And you're like, goalie makes a great save on it. Yeah. It's almost like taking the wind out of sails. Yeah. Yeah. Like, especially like, and I, we use the analogy a ton. Like if, you know, the same thing, like we, our goal was to keep Guilford off as long as possible. And it was probably like the 16th or 17th minute when they scored. And it's the same, like, it was a nice goal, mm-hmm. but I, I consider it as something like preventable. Like I feel, I, I felt like we probably could have done a better job before that goal was given up. Right. And we, you know, we talk about it in practice all the time. It's like, once they get one, it's like sharks with blood in the water and you just <laughs> yeah, kind of yeah, like come. one. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you look up and they've got one and then all of a sudden there's nine guys in the 18 and they're looking for goals, three, four, five. Yeah. Like, and it was, I think four, four, nothing at halftime. Yeah. And then, you know, tw- in the last 20 minutes, they scored those four. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, we're same thing, like just battle for the second half and just try to keep it at four or five, like respectable, right. Respe- right. like keep it as a respectable uh, outcome. And then before you know, it, it's like, less than three minutes in the second half, they score again yeah. and again and again and again. And it's like, they're bringing in, you know, their bench and kids like 17, 18, 19 are just as good as, you know, my 10, 11, 12. So it's like, there's no real letdown. Right. Like there's right. just a constant, you yeah. know, reload over there. Yeah. Right? They don't need to sub. <laughs> no. Doesn't. Those, they're, and, and, and that's always been, you know, the kind of the trademark of, you know, the Guilford team. They're, they're very well conditioned. They're very well disciplined. Um, they, they, they just don't make a lot of those physical mistakes that, that we see, um, probably on a daily basis where you're like, Oh, that, that's not mental. That's just physical. You, yeah, you right. can't really do what you tell me you, you can do as a player coach. I can do that. <laughs> well, okay. Maybe not. They'll have their, uh, they'll have their blonde hair out in a, in a week or yes. so, I would assume yes. to finish up the regular season. They will. They will. Yeah. Yeah. I see that. That's like a. See that coming off the bus, and you're just like, "Oh my goodness!" Off the like, bus, I mean, they're going to be hosting the entire way through. Yeah. Well, I'm fun. just saying, like, it'll be the like, final four, and like a semifinal <laughs> or final four, you see, and it's just like, it's just, I don't know, it's not a bad thing, but it's like just their mark, and yeah. you're like, "Oh my goodness!" And it's in- it's come. intimidating. That's what I mean. I mean, like, we, it's, I've only played Guilford in the playoffs once, and it was one of those, you know, we played them twice in the regular season, and we were okay, but we had a softer schedule, so I mean, we had we finished as the ten seed, which is great for for a program like ours where we're usually in that like 11 to 15, 16 range. And so we had, you know, lost over it. We had lost Guilford to come to our place, blew us out. It was like four, nothing, which is respectable. And then we go and we tied them at their place. So then we had, you know, we had, the, we had Guilford in a down year. They were the seven seed or whatnot. <laughs> Air and, quotes. And they didn't, year. <laughs> and they didn't come out with the blonde hair because they were in a lower seed and yeah. that's a final four thing. And, but they didn't come out of their school until there was probably like less than 20 minutes left before the game started. Yeah. And our guys are like working hard through the warm up. Like they're they're ready for for battle. 
And they're coming over like, damn, where's Guilford? Where's Guilford? Are they coming out? Are they going to play? I'm like, no, they'll be here. And they're like, as a coach, you're like, yeah, they'll be here. And then you wait and you wait and you wait. And then you see them coming out of their school with like 15 minutes left before game time and they don't touch a ball. And you're like, they're ready. They're, they're, <laughs> this is going to be a rough one. And, yeah. you know, if, you know, fortunately for us, it was a, it was a goal that we gave up late with like under two minutes left yeah. that, that ended our season in the first round and they went on to win the championship. But it's the same thing. Like, the blonde hair and coming out of the school, very little time to to start a game. That definitely it's a sen- it's a statement that sends a message like, yeah. hey, we're we're not here to mess around like some of these other like. And you know, in the spring, I was a little like we had a really good team this spring, and there was a couple of times going into the playoffs where I was like, I don't necessarily know like we're ready. Like I didn't feel confident. And then you like look into the dugout and the guys were like fooling around and, you know, joking. I'm like, come on guys. Like, this is a really good <laughs> team. I don't want to, I don't want to waste this yeah. and losing the first round. And then we go out and we just blow the doors off the first round. And I was like, okay, these guys are ready. Yeah. But like Guilford coming out with 20 minutes before the game, I'm like, these, that's a whole different animal over there. Yeah. We used to do the, uh, used to, and, and again, I, I still ask guys to do this, but we used to do the Mohawks and, uh, the the year uh, it was 2012 we we had another undefeated season and um we got to i'd always told the guys i said look you know we, you make it to a state championship game i'm i'm getting a mohawk i was fair fair enough <laughs> and uh and so we uh we we come out of the semifinals uh that year uh we played we played fall mountain and they had a, they had a great team that year um but you know, the year before, we had made it to the semifinals and got blown out by Bo, uh, and they were they were on lights out, great. And uh, so, in this you know semifinal game, I was like, you know, let's let's we just we got to go out and play our game. And I, we were mainly seniors that year, and um, they went out and just destroyed, destroyed. Five, but we beat them four nothing, and it wasn't even a wasn't close at all. Um, but we get back to the to school, um, you know, that night from the semifinals, and we walk into the lobby of the of the high school. Guys pulled out a chair. Coach sat down. <laughs> <laughs> Hair was gone, and and it was great. And you know, we you know, it's funny because there's a there's a photo I have somewhere of uh, in the in the state championship game because the that year the game was supposed to be at Snoo. We got like a foot of snow. <laughs> on the on the Saturday of what should have been the state championship, and so they had to move the game because it got moved. We couldn't play at SNU, so we ended up playing the finals at uh, Exeter. And uh, but they had, and they had to plow the field, you know, for the for the game. And uh, I remember it was just freezing, freezing cold. And, and you had like, your fresh cut. I yeah, had my <laughs> fresh cut. I, I looked good, but it was just one of those things. You were like. <laughs> I'm freezing. I go, but I don't care. I don't care. It's whatever. It's once in a lifetime. Can't put a hat on because no of the mohawk. And <laughs> no, yeah, you can't get that kind of haircut <laughs> no. and then hide it. But, <laughs> so we, we played Bo in the finals that year, and uh, uh, George Pinkham, uh, you know, we're chatting before the game, and he's like, what did you do? And I, I go, what do you mean? He goes, why'd you cut your hair? I go, all the guys have mohawks on this team. And he's like, oh, oh. I go, your brother, Dave, all those kids – dye their hair and he's like yeah 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 that's a that's a guildford thing and i'm looking at Bo, and i'm going i don't i don't see it i don't yeah. couldn't figure it out but <clears throat> it was a good game anyway we lost <laughs> one nothing anyway yeah we, we we try not to let you live that down you know that's right. the hey. goose egg in the championship column look i i've been there twice <laughs> and uh, hey, you know what it's okay and and to for somebody who like the goal is always to get there it's yeah. always to get there it's just a it's a fun experience when you are there that like yeah you want to win it but at the same time like you want you want to show up and not be not necessarily embarrassed right you want to show up and not be embarrassed like right. and that's kind of like what happened in the spring we were kind of like not necessarily in awe but at the same time like that was the first time Interlex has gone to a state final in baseball ever mm-hmm. so we were just kind of like soaking it all in trying to trying to get as much out of it as we could. And then at the same time, like once the game started, Mananok was a power. Yeah. They were a powerhouse. And we were just kind of like, we were in the dugout. We were just like, we got to make it somewhat respectable. Like we, this is our one chance to yeah. to show everybody in the state, like, hey, this isn't a fluke for us. Right. And, you know, those guys battled back, but it's the same thing. Like 
I never, like, I always wanted to get there. But at the same time, like, you never really feel like you're going to get there until you're, like, on the bus getting there. Right. Like, and right. you don't want to take it for granted. Like, that might be, unfortunately, that might, might, that might be the only time we ever go. Yeah. And so it's just kind of one of those, like, yeah, we're blanked in that spot, too. But, hey, you know, at least I can say we got there. Right. That's, 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 a, that's a good point. It's like one of those once-in-a-lifetime things. It is. But in those, those players that you coach on those championship-run teams are – are bound to that moment forever. Oh yeah. And, and they, they love it. Um, you know, we're coming up on, which is nuts, but you know, I'm coming up on 20 years ago, you know, we played for a state championship and, and lost two one in double overtime on, I credit this kid. I, I couldn't tell the kid's name now, but kid from <laughs> Sanborn hit, hit the goal of a lifetime, you know, hit a half bike from the right corner of the 18 and stuck it in the l- upper left-hand corner of the goal. Remember it vividly because it was at Merrimack Valley. And uh, and it was a great goal. And, you know, it, it was heartbreaking that you, you lost in that in that manner. But as soon as the ball went into the net, like, I just I looked at the guys and they were like, oh, my God, I can't believe we lost. But then they were like, what a great shot. Yeah, I mean, what a great at, shot. At that, yeah. at that point, if you're going to lose in that kind of game, you almost want it to be... An, an incredible, yeah. You yeah. want it to be a goal yeah. that is like a sports center highlight play. Yeah. You don't want a one where it was just like you don't want a garbage goal. No. Exactly, yeah. you don't want to lose on a garbage goal. That's a terrible way to. It's a terrible way to lose. Yeah. Where if you're gonna, ha- if you want to go down, like I'm okay with the fact that the Manadnock kid hit the bar in left field, 50 feet up the wall. That's the longest ball wow. I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> wow. Like that. That was a shot. Same thing. Like yeah. if you're gonna lose, I want it to be basically going down swinging. Right. And and if you give up a bat, if it's a good goal. You just tip your cap and just say, hey, that kid made a great play. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Well, cool. Well, Foley. Hey. What do you got? <laughs> hey. 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 Um, <laughs> so you, wow, busy week for you. 1-1 one, one tie against Mascoma. 1-1 one, one tie against Mascoma. Um, then then you, like, left the state. I left. So I guess you weren't I, upset I left with. New England. I guess you weren't okay with the 1-1 one, one tie, right? You I, just kind of packed I, your bag and you left. Know, well, that was basically what I did. But... <laughs> <laughs> what look you know mascoma was uh a really really it was a tough game um very physical game um they were um i i, I tipped the cap to them because they were they were relentless mm-hmm. they just came at us came at us came at us um my guys defended very well uh my goalkeeper um jacob uh bivens was was outstanding uh in net and as you know, Dan and I were talking before, you know, they, they got some kids who can hit shots um, yeah. and they hit some lasers uh, that had eyes on the upper nineties. And uh, uh, Jacob was forced really, he hasn't been tested often this season. And, uh, and again, that's where I, I kind of credit the defense that's in front of him. But uh, when we've needed him, he's, he's been huge. And uh, we got a goal. Um, I'm going to say, uh, my notes here but um midway through the first half we we ended up um we were given a pk um my uh, i have an exchange student from spain and uh, alejandro took a ball deked a couple of guys got into the box and kid tripped him from behind and you know down he went and then uh, alejandro took the pk and uh, hit it home and uh late in the game um you know mascoma just they they found a second gear and my god they sent everybody <laughs> and um we just we had a, you know we had one defensive miscommunication and left a kid wide open 14 yards out <clears throat> no way he was missing it um so they tied it uh, at one and then in uh the second overtime 2 minutes into the second OT uh, I had a I had a player lose. Uh, we'll, we'll call it lose focus. <laughs> lose focus. It's one way to put it. <laughs> uh, it's one way to put it. Ended up uh, uh, unfortunately, um, you know, picking the kid up and throwing him to the ground, and uh, he he found his way out of the game with a red card. Um, which, Go out in the blaze of glory. Jeez. No, not not ever. <laughs> That's not I, necessarily glory. I don't think. <laughs> not ever what you want to see as a coach. Right. And uh, and he and he knew it uh, instantly. And uh, and he's gonna he's gonna sit, um, you know, for a couple of games uh, because of it. Um, but um, 
you know, we played a man down with eight minutes left to go in a second overtime where you, you got a lot of tired legs out there and they were still coming. Uh, but with probably about a minute left in the game, uh, we had a we had a throw in deep in their end and uh, we played it uh, rather quick. Um, uh, Will Riley took a ball, uh, sent it in. It got sent right back to him. He sent it right back into a wide open Alejandro on the six, and he tried to kill it. Oh, oh. and just sent it sent it over the net. And one, you know, one of the things we talk about all, and we train it every single day is we work on redirecting the ball. And and you know, he, he came off the field after the game. He's like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm like. I go, what do we work on in practice every day? He's like, I know. <laughs> I'm like, I know you know, but Come um, on, man. But it was just uh, we had so we had we had we truly had a golden opportunity to to win it. Uh, but I think you know at the end of the day, one one was was probably the right score of the game. Um, they're a good program. Um, they have they've definitely kind of found a way to uh, compete uh, and compete at a high level. So. Um, they're they're probably a team we'll see early uh, in the playoffs. Um, I think standing wise, I think we're 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 probably you're th- you're fifth and they're third. Yeah. Or according to the NHIA website, yeah. I have to put that little earmark yeah, out there. Well, there's an asterisk <laughs> there too because it's just you know some guys, some teams have played more right. more games than others, and uh, but uh, they're they're a quality team and they're you know they've they've played some some good schools and uh i think they've definitely figured out a couple of things to to make them competitive right no for so. sure i think it's no i think you're i heard the recap of the game i'm still part of the uh soccer group on facebook and i got saw the photos and stuff and it seemed like it was a good game it was great for sure it was great and, uh you know the boys boys played well um but i i also think you know we we had played it's something like I think six games in like 11 days. I mean, it was, it was a lot of soccer for these guys. So, but this was also in, from the schedule standpoint, this was our break right. uh, in the season. So, um, you know, so they, they didn't, we, we could throw them out there for as long as possible on Tuesday, knowing they really didn't have a game until yeah, the following week. Yeah. Right. So, wow. you know, give them a chance to rest, recoup, and uh, and do that. And then that was my opportunity to go to Colorado for a family <laughs> event. So, you know, just you know, throw that out there. Right. The get away for greener pastures. Yeah, literally. Well, you know. <laughs> Shucks, I have to leave good. for Colorado. Darn it. Darn it. Sounds awful, yeah. I know. And it I, really I, does. What, which is not, you know, uh, A, I'm never, I, it was funny because when my wife was trying to plan this this trip, I was like, look, here's my schedule. This is the only <laughs> time I have potentially available. Within the within the season. Within yeah. the season. Which is uh, huge. And, and she went, okay, I'm planning it for those those days. And I went, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, like darn it. <laughs> no, it was fine. Um, it's, yeah. never, it's never enjoyable to leave in season or mm-hmm. to miss a practice or a game. And it's like, I mean, you obviously have a great JV slash an assistant coach yeah. where you could – you know, go away for a day or two and trust that like the, yeah. if everything's yeah. still going in the, in the same direction. And I have, you know, I have a couple of guys that I trust that I can just be like, Hey, I'm not going to make it to practice today. This is, you know, the emphasis for the mm-hmm. day. But at the same time, you're like, if you're, you know, at work or you're going somewhere else, you're just constantly thinking like, I really hope like the guys are doing well. I hope that they're pretty behaving themselves. Yep. I hope that they're getting everything right. that they're supposed to be getting out of it because you're not there and you know how teenagers are. No, nope. it's like Coaches having a, here. yeah, it's like having Woo. a substitute teacher. Like oh, yeah. you know, John's name is actually Jeff today, and yeah. they're going to play any kinds of tricks they can <laughs> to to see what they can get away with. Yeah. What are you talking about? Kids do that? No, I know. no, no not, not, never. At all. not not never. the guild, for, not the guild for kids. I sub. <laughs> wow. It's weird. Wow. Wow. It's weird. You never did that as a student. No, no. actually, I never. I actually will say honestly, I never, never did. I was always the kid who stepped he's, up and said, no. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> All right. Well, before I talk about what we did this week, briefly, because we have like we covered, I don't know, eight games. Nice. What did What did you get? Anything else you guys want to throw in there before we listen to me drone on for a minute? We, you know, again, because for us, it was uh, it was obviously a light week with just one game, and so you know, we 
you know, that was game 12, you know, for us. So we're, we're four games left, uh, in the season and, uh, you have two a week for the next two weeks, and it's it's done. It's it's that quick. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean we're in the same boat. I mean we had that little break of a one game week probably early September. Yeah. I mean every we've been playing two two a week every week for the last you know month, and we were on the road. We were on the road a lot. I have one. We have four games left, and one's away. But you know the f- month of September, we were a home. We were a home team once. Until you know, from from the end of August to the end of September, we had only had one home game, and it's oh. it's you know I'd rather get all the away games out of the way, but it's not enjoyable to go back to back to back to back to back all right. the way. It's nice to have a little bit of uh, you know some home a home stand. Yeah, I mean, and like like we had talked about earlier, like it's nice to have turf and to use that as our you know an advantage at times. But our turf is basically uh, is a game field. We don't yeah. get on it very often between, you know, our soccer team, girls soccer, you know, two football teams and then some middle school teams from from time to time. So like we're we have a home game today or tomorrow and we're practicing on grass. Yeah. So I mean it's just one of those one of those things that we don't get we don't know it's, without lights it's a tough opportunity to to fit on there. And I mean we're nice little nice little plug there. I know. You know. For, for <laughs> you anyone, know without lights I anybody know, out there. I know, right? <laughs> it, it, hey, you know, we've had, we've got a really nice facility. It's nice to it would be yeah. nice to to take that next step and and to show it off a little bit, but I mean, we have two game, we you know two two weeks, two weeks left. We have game, you know, two games a week. We're trying to, to not necessarily back into the playoffs, but if you know, I would love to steal one of those last couple spots if if we were fortunate enough to get in there. But it's not, it's not gonna be easy on our end to yeah, right. to get that done. I mean, we've got Guilford who's tough. We have Hillsborough who's tough. We got Mascoma who's tough. Um, and Mascoma just beat you know a pretty good Winnesquam team uh, Friday Friday night. So. I mean, it's it's not going to be easy an easy stretch for us, to say the least. I think, in my opinion, practicing on grass but also playing on turf is a blessing and a curse because how many times have you seen a team show up who only practices on turf show up to a grass field and they need that minute to adjust how grass can be slower? But, like, at the same time, for what you're saying, you're only practicing on grass, then come game time, it's like, whoa, that ball went a lot faster than I expected. Yeah. So yeah, it's like a blessing and a curse in a and sense. And we and we have that happen even to our, even ourselves. Like, and we take a lot. We put a lot of emphasis on touch and settling the ball because we do have that um, constant switching of of surfaces. Because now that Laconia is in Division Two, I mean, how many times are you guys on turf? Did you play like Saint once. Saint Thomas has turf and we have turf? Or well, like Trinity is in Division Two and Laconia is in Division Two. So you're like any other turf school is not in our division anymore. Right. right. So you know, and it was funny because we played um, we played Farmington a, f- a few weeks ago in the pouring rain. Go figure. And uh, I told the coach after you know it was a hard game. It was three two. We we snuck away with one. And I told him I was like I'll see you in a couple weeks. And he's like oh we he's like we have a grass field so you guys might not be able to. It might be a little bit of an adjustment because he thinks that we only have right. we only have turf, and I'm like, oh, well, I actually have like a full size grass practice field that we've been on more often than turf anyway. Right. So, right. but it's the same thing. I mean, we put so much emphasis on how to pass a ball on turf because it's a lot different than you know if you're, if you're I mean, unless you're playing at Guilford per se because their grass is very short. Short, right. um, super short. Yeah. But yeah. if you go, yeah, you go to some other you go to some other schools where it's not cut that short. You have to pass the ball a lot harder to go the distance that we are apart as opposed to, you know, if you're on our home turf and you hit a ball half as hard, it's going to roll for 30 yards. Right. And it, you know, that ball that you think was just enough is rolling out of bounds on the corner. And you're just like any opportunity you may have had is now, is now gone. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The one, the one thing we've always drilled into players heads, particularly when you, when you got to a playoff time, and you knew you were going to play on turf, was you and I probably preached the same thing: is that everything, every pass has to be defeat. I go when you send that home run ball through, thinking, "All right, this kid's going to run onto it." They're never going to make it. They're never <laughs> going to catch up with that ball. And and they, you know, coach, we, you you'll see. And I'm like, no, okay. <laughs> and it yeah. usually Wait it usually it. takes yeah five minutes into the game. Yeah, they send that ball that. You know, nine times out of ten, the goalie's probably not coming off for. Right. Like he's just going to sit there and watch it because it's going to roll away. Yeah. 
and the goalie comes out, and that's an opportunity that you know you guys may have scored you know a handful right. of goals on that same particular play, right. and then they come up the sideline. You don't want to necessarily be like, "I told you so," right. <laughs> but as soon as they run by, you're like, "I told you you can't play that particular right. type of ball here." Yeah. And I mean, we see it a ton yeah. because you know, like we we preach it in our pregame and our 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 pre chat before the game starts. Like you've got about twenty minutes. Yeah. You've got about 20 minutes where you're going to be the better surfaced team because that's about how long it takes. I mean, depending on right. how what, how long the team has been there for. But right. for the most part, you get about 15 or 20 minutes where, like, that's when you have to cash in. And fortunately for us, I mean, we scored that goal against Kearsarge five minutes in. It, it, wasn't, a, it wasn't a pretty goal right. at all. I mean, it was a ball that our goalie punted that bounced twice before my striker got onto the end of it. Nice. And it was just one of those, like, Kearsarge really good, but they didn't. They couldn't judge that ball bouncing, and it you know it, it's artificial turf. It hits the ground and it still goes. So it yeah. bounced over a kid. My kid ran onto it. Kearsarge kid fell. It was one v one, and we just buried it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But did we have any more opportunities like that? Maybe two or three. But once we got past that twenty twenty two minute mark, it's fair game, and both yeah. teams are just as equally yeah. you know used Kearsarge to the turf definitely. at that point. You know, mm-hmm. like you have to unless you're unless you're just you know, way out there and you're not trying to adjust, right. but you know, that's very, it's very few and far between at the varsity level. Yeah. Right. For sure. Well, cool. We'll, we'll talk about what's coming ahead, looking ahead for you guys in a minute, but for on my notes, I said the DPPG report, we covered seven games, two on Monday and two on Thursday. Um, and then one every other day, but on Monday last week, we covered volleyball, St. Thomas at Guilford, Three nothing St. Thomas kind of expected that Guilford volleyball is off this year, which is weird. Um, I think it's because they're very young. Um, I know I'm talking to the wrong crowd right now because no. you guys are just looking at no, me we've, like we've mm-hmm, never yeah. heard about Guilford. Yeah, volleyball. I know. Right? Well, no, were no. they were they good? They were a little bit, a little bit. Have no. they won, have they won a championship? No, in the not last, at all. You know, not, I, Eighteen months. I don't, <laughs> right. um, but then also Come I. House. Oh, yeah, I went usually. to, so we kind of expected that for Guilford though, because St. Thomas is doing pretty good this year. And like I said, Guilford's young, you know, that was coach Tripp told me that she was like, we're just very young. You know, we have our moments. They had really good rallies in the first set. I had to rewatch my own broadcast because I wound up going to Campbell that night. Um, I went to Campbell for a last minute undefeated versus undefeated volleyball game. Nice. That co Brown versus Campbell co Brown destroyed Campbell three sets to none. Wow. Like I, at one point I'm sitting there announcing this game. I'm working by myself. I drove the hour and 20 minutes there and my parents are watching and they're like, wow, this is a, this is a game. And I'm like, I, I did. I drove down here for this. Like I was expecting like a guaranteed, yeah. you know, it's going to be a five set everything. And then I'm like, yeah, not all oh, games are going to yeah. be Guilford Campbell to boys soccer. Well, not even. You know well, I mean? Yeah. So, like, <laughs> like, I was like, oh, my goodness. Um, either way, it was a good game. Co Brown won three sets to none. Um, Campbell, I think, just didn't show up. And I don't know what happened or whatever, but because um, I'm not a volleyball mind. But sometimes the team, a better team, just takes you out of whatever it is you're, you think you're going to do. Right. And well, and it was, it was fun, though, because the next day I subbed at Guilford. And uh, the volleyball, I walked up to the volleyball team and I talked to them about their game. And they were like, oh, yeah, and that Co Brown game. And I'm like, what? what? And they were like, well, one of them said, I ignored a lecture this morning and rewatched the game. And I'm like, don't say that too loud. <laughs> IT will shut our website down in a heartbeat. But um, but they were like, yeah, I know that. Attention, like, IT department. Well, yeah, know, yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Block DPPG. Yeah, literally. I had a school email me once and say, well, has your IP address changed? I'm like, no. And they're like, okay, good, because we, we, we had to block your website on our networks. So we wanted to make sure. And I'm like, now I'm going to change it. <laughs> but uh, no, but... um. No, it was it was a uh, it was interesting the Campbell game and the Guilford game. They had a lot of good rallies there in that game, but St. Thomas beat them. Um, to the game that made it on WMUR, Campbell at Guilford and boys soccer. That game, I mean, you guys can probably chime in because I assume you probably watched part of it or tuned into part of it or. I didn't even know that. I'm just kidding. No, I was gonna say, come on. <laughs> was that a big game in Division Three? <laughs> yeah, I, th- yeah, I mean, it, I the thought entire, so. entire state. Yeah. yeah. Pretty sure that's our most highest watched game this season so far. But no, that's I mean, surprising. it was it was a it was a good game. But Campbell, I don't know. It was weird, and I think I said it in the broadcast. 
I think I took the game as face value, like most people did, and said undefeated versus undefeated. Mm-hmm. But Campbell wasn't at the same level Guilford was. Yeah. I was going to say, maybe you guys being soccer minds can agree or disagree with me, but, you know, it, it seemed like they didn't, they weren't. Well, I, but there's where I think you tip your cap to a Guilford team is that, you know, you you can come in to a game like that and go, okay, we we can play with you. And they and they did for right. a while, but but the the part that that I think separates Guilford from most ever probably all schools in Division Three is they're just they're relentless. They right. just yeah. keep coming and and they they don't do anything to me. They don't do anything that's super flashy, super unique. They try to do a particular thing against a particular team. Right. And they try to exploit weaknesses, and if they find a weakness, they're all it, over it's, it. It's right. game on. Um, but that's <clears throat> that's generally what they what they try to do. Campbell has a kid who's who's very very good, but Guilford also has players who can take one player, you take your best player, and they're going to find a way to to remove him right. from being or having an impact in a game, and. And I, that's realistically what they did mm-hmm. uh, in the game. And but that's you know, that, you know that's kind of the, the Guilford magic, uh, if you will. And that's just like to not to repeat it, but I mean I've been doing it for you know a few years, and I've watched a lot of Guilford teams, whether it was when I was in high school and with the JV team, and now as the varsity coach. And this has got to be one of the probably better Guilford teams that that Dave's had in a while. Mm. I mean. You know, we used to play them twice all the time, and you know, the last few years we've only played them once. You know, luckily for us, and um, I mean, they're they're they are a relentless group where there's no like we were talking about. Um, you know, trying to po- find a kid that like is a little bit weaker on the defense that you're going to want to exploit that. And I don't necessarily think Guilford has that one particular place where you can just be like, all right, this is where we're going to go. They do. Oh boy. And I'm not going to tell you what it is, but they do. <laughs> on, on camera. Uh, can you tell me off air? Because <laughs> yeah, I have them next week. But, <laughs> but they, they do. The problem is, is that chance is going to clean everything up. Take every, you can, I, in the, in the second time we played them, we, we found a way to get around the backs of their defense. And the second we turn the corner, you think, okay, cool. We're going to goal and chances there. And yeah. you're like, no, nah, maybe not. Yeah. Um, and that's and you know those you know that's kind of the you know the thing that's that's there with them. What you know and again, Guilford is going to approach every game the basically the same way. They're they're going to have their their tactics that they're going to use to try to exploit something. And if they can if they find it, then then again they're they're off to the races. If they don't find it, they they're gonna they're gonna go to their strength. Right. Um, and they're really their strength is right up the middle of the field. And right. Look, they're they're good at pushing balls wide. They feed off corner kicks. They feed off the long throw-ins. Yep. So anything yeah. deep in the offensive third of the field, that ball is coming into the six. And right away, there will be seven, eight guys waiting for it, calling for it, or calling other guys off from it. And they're good at at listening to one another and knowing where one another is realistically at all times right and i think campbell played a really good game you know and and as much as in that second half i might have been like 10 and oh what but like they still played well against guilford i mean they held them what two one yeah you know and um yeah and it was it was overall a good game but it is interesting because something i brought up was if you look at the two schedules and i'm looking at them right now campbell kind of played like I don't want to say an easier schedule, but like they were playing the Hillsborough Deering, they were playing like the Manchester, they were playing the Raymonds, you know. So they lose to Guilford, and then they lost again to St. Thomas. Wow, to was the game at St. Thomas. Uh, yes. Okay. So it's a it, tur- that's a turf field. Yeah. Okay. Which so, is and it's a weird turf field because they're they've got probably fifty yards off to the side, like where the bench area is. That's all turf. Right. But it's like practice area. I was going to say, it's a beautiful facility. And then, yeah, and then you go to, like, like the middle of their field is, like, where the crown is. Mm-hmm. But it's a significant drop to the to the other, to the opposite sideline where the bench is. So yeah. if you're sending that ball to the corner or trying to get it around, I mean, you basically have to just push it a little and it's going to roll very quickly. And right. we, we never, 
adapted to that at all. And St. Thomas is a really good team. Yeah. I mean, they're a very, very good team. And it's like we've like, you know, you can you can look at the schedule and see who played who and right. and all that. And unfortunately, like, not to not to take shots, but like Manchester West isn't very good. Right. Hopking this is a down year for yeah, for Hopkinson. Hopkington. Yep. Like not that I feel bad for, for Zipke because they've had, you know, a ton of <laughs> a ton of really talented years and like yeah. welcome to the the middle of the pack for D three. <laughs> yeah. Like if he ever wants to chat, I I'll gladly like yeah. you know, yeah. trade horror stories with yeah. him. But I mean like you're playing some of the weaker teams that yeah. you're not going against the Guilfords or Prospects, Belmont, yeah. Saint Thomas, Brady, those teams that are always at the top and just, good good teams should handle those those weaker schedule yeah. years and be at the top. It just it makes me wonder like if you know, Campbell's there, like I said, they're a good team. Mm-hmm. But now they played Guilford, who's a quality, you know, a a, a, Elite. a contender. Yeah, yep. a leader. Now St. Thomas, who's usually pretty good at what they do. And then they lose to them. And it's like, whoa, wait a minute. But Hang you, on a minute. Here. You know, one of, one of the things from a from a coaching standpoint, you know, you, you may have emptied the tank against a Guilford. Yeah. You don't know you know, potential injuries that came out of the game. Or, and they played them three days later. So, or, or what happened over the course of three days at training or whether or not kids get sick or... You know, yeah. Look, well, and you it's, know, it's like you had said where you had that Tuesday where you knew you have nothing else down the pipeline. I right. mean, you can, you can send a guy that might necessarily be only able to play like 70, 75 right. and push him to that 80, 90 if you're in that double overtime state, like where yeah. you guys were. Knowing he I mean, that's a, recover. I mean, that's a, I mean, between Guilford and Campbell, I mean, that's a, that's a hard fought game. Yeah. That's yeah. It probably wasn't, I mean, it was warmer for right. what we had been dealing with a little bit. And Would it's you, tough to, it's tough to bounce back two days later. I mean, in our case, I mean, we played, I thought we played really well on Tuesday against Berlin. And then, I had some I had some guys that just didn't look themselves Thursday when we played Cure Sarge. Yeah. And I thought like maybe if they were at, you know, eighty percent instead of sixty five, that's a different game a little bit at times. Right. So like like Foley said, I mean, it might be a little bit different to because you're not necessarily like looking past St. Thomas per se, but when you come off of that high, you're either and if it doesn't go your way, you're either looking forward to that next game to be like, all right, we're going to send a message to whomever that is, or you're just like, oh, I can't wait to get past this stretch yeah. where we can get a little bit of time to to step back and and recoup a little bit. Right. No, for sure. No, it's it's just interesting to think a look at that. Sure. You know, and sure. Um, it, it, it it changes things because like a Campbell is going to play a a little bit of a tougher schedule to finish out the season. Yeah, versus Stevens, Raymond, Kearsarge, and then Prospect. And those are all those, contenders. Those are, well, Stevens not so. Although I think Stevens has kind of figured out a couple things uh, in chatting in chatting with them over the course of the year. Um, but uh, but Raymond is always tough. Um, we have Raymond um, next Tuesday. You going to Raymond? No, they, we've already been there once. That's a small field to play on too. Tough little atmosphere. Super. Physical game again. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's Raymond's mo, yep. though. Regardless of yep. who's in charge over there. We, yeah. Well, we, I mean, we beat them three-one at Raymond, and and they were realistically, you know, two very late goals um, that we got to make it three-one. So, uh, but you know, Campbell's. I don't know. Is a game at Campbell or at uh, for Raymond? You're yeah. saying it's at Raymond All on right. the thirteenth. So they got to they got to go to a not a not a. And this time of year, probably not really great. That great it's not going to be in great shape, no. Because when we played there, it was it was beautiful. It was, and that's it's it's used by so many teams uh, that they it just gets beaten up. Yeah, it's like Franklin's Field back yeah. in the day. If you were playing them, you wanted them early because yeah. between football, field hockey, and soccer, there's no grass anymore. Right. 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 Well, yeah, I know that was a good game though. Two one Guilford. On uh, Wednesday, I think it was, we covered field hockey at Guilford versus Hopkinton, where Guilford beat them 8 nothing. Guilford's the only undefeated team in Division Three for field hockey right now. Nice. Um, they're going to they're gonna do something. Their playoffs start eight days from now, on the 18th. Um, then on Thursday, we you know went to the school named Interlakes, um, <laughs> where uh, we covered their volleyball team. 
And <laughs> I'll get to your game in a minute. Uh, We've already talked about Pierce. Sorry, there's say. not much left to talk uh, about. We covered their volleyball game, um, Lakers versus the Cougars. Lakers beat them three nothing. Um, that was a that was a fun game to watch if you were a Lakers fan. Mm-hmm. I don't know if as far as a Kira Sarge fan came, yeah. but um, well, there was, was a handful of football guys in the gym that night, so that that definitely that get, makes the atmosphere <laughs> a little more enjoyable, regardless of team you're rooting for. That's yeah. true. That's true. But uh, then, of course, we had the soccer game, um, which I thought was a really good game. And I thought, you know, Kearsarge definitely, I think it was around the 50th minute when they tied it and then took the lead. And then that last four minutes, they got the third goal. That was, I'm pretty sure I even said that was the, you know, the burying goal. You know, like, okay, this is this is it. Um, well, I mean, we, <laughs> we, had scored, we had scored so early <laughs> on and survived and at halftime I told the guys I'm like they're gonna just they're gonna come at they're just coming right. at you I right. mean you guys weathered it for 35 minutes they're gonna, you gotta you gotta if we can get another one we'll be in great shape yeah I'm like but they're gonna keep coming at you you've got to basically not give up space and something that's been not necessarily our backbreaker but something that's uh, that's killed us all year long is we struggle at defending corners right and we might if we're only going to give up two or three, we'll probably survive that. If, you know, when we're playing the the top teams in our division and they're getting, you know, corner seven, eight, nine, ten, sometimes 12, those are hard to withstand. Right. And, you know, Kearsarge had a couple, you know, a couple against us on, on Thursday where it was they would take one and then we would try to clear it and it would go out of bounds the other side. So they take another one right away. And, and two of the three goals they score were just back post goals that yep. – you know, looking at the film, my guy's just in a terrible position that, you know, and I use the an- analogy that I stole from an old um, JV coach years ago for basketball. It's like, you can't let him cut your stomach. And I basically try to, you know, now that we're in that Halloween time, like not to make it dark, but I'm like, <laughs> if you let the other team cut in front of you, you're basically just, your guts are spilled out and you're done. Yeah. And, and looking back on the film, you're just watching a couple of guys just make great runs and the weak the the weak post guy the back post guy is just sitting there not necessarily watching but like allowing that cut yeah. and you know Kears, you know credit to Kearsarge, they they didn't give up they battled um we didn't back I, mean, I, I wasn't packing it in i wasn't going to go like <laughs> okay we got a one goal lead let's put 10 guys inside the 18 and just see what see what they can do i mean but i mean we had a chance to make it 3 to 2 late we had right. a PK that was, you know, their goalie made a great save on, but right. I no, mean, I think, I three think, to, a three to two score looks better than a three to one score. Yeah. But at the same time, like we wanted to go out and not necessarily, you know, we won the first half, right. but at the end of the day, winning the first half doesn't mean much if you not necessarily go out and blow the second half, but the second half we were just, Kearsarge was the better team. There wasn't really a whole lot. It was better than I thought. I, you know, they could, we were competitive. We com- we competed with them. We stuck with them. There wasn't right. like, it was just a bloodbath, but you know when you give up one, yeah. you know you gotta you gotta kill off two to three minutes of just another relentless attack before right. it happens again. And yeah. unfortunately for us, they got a couple. They got the two corner goals, and then they got a. It was just another nice goal. They made it three to one. Yeah. I would have liked to have made it three to two. I mean, people <laughs> would have talked about the score a little bit better, probably. But <laughs> but I think that was definitely one of those games that you can't just look at the score and go, "Yep, Kira Sarge." You know, you have to have the conversation because I agree with you. It was a good game. You guys, you guys played well. They played well, um, and it was, you know, it was entertaining. You know, and, and as much as I'm a soccer person, there have been some games I've covered this year where it's the fiftieth minute. And I'm going, oh my goodness, I got thirty more minutes of this. Mm-hmm. Whereas that game kept me involved. You know, it was like okay. You know, as the announcer, I was like, okay, storylines. They're one goal away. Right. You know, and then the penalty kick happened, and I was like, here we go. Yeah. This this could be it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you hear, we had talked about with the um, some of the chatter on the field. You know, you heard that in the broadcast because our area mic was right next to yeah, I mean, where that happened. <laughs> and I remember saying, I just glazed over it. I was like, I don't know what happened, but there's a little bit of a delay. We're going to get going again because it's easier just to. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it wasn't, I mean, and it's tough. Like you had said earlier, I mean, we're on the sideline and I had told the officials after the game, I was like, Hey, did you guys hear any of this? Because my guys had just said it and it's, and I get it. Like they're teenagers and you're in that heat of the moment, right. but there's still things that are just crossing the line. Mm-hmm. And you ask the official, like if they can hear it, but at the same time, like they're 30, 40 yards away, 
they're already, you know, they're human beings. They're, yeah. And we're putting like, I don't know about you, but I will heckle, not heckle, but I'll ride an official <laughs> well, you heckle. quite a bit. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm trying to, if you're not trying to steal every single call, I mean, you're not necessarily giving yourself the best chance. And, right. you know, I've learned a lot over the, the eight years that I've been doing it. But like, there are times that like, I get that an official's probably not going to hear every little right. thing that's said, but then there are some things that are just like Pretty what the obvious. guys came off the field saying against Kearsarge the other day. I was, I was just like, hey, did you guys hear anything? Because I don't want to go to our AD with it and then not be like, all right, well, there was no other adult that heard it besides me. And then it's just me right. against them. And yeah. I don't necessarily know how much water my, my word will hold at times. And <laughs> not that you want to like, not witch hunt it, mm-hmm. but at this, I mean, that was a tough game physically, emotionally, mentally to, to get through. And, you know, we've had a couple, like, we lost to Brady 2 nothing. We gave up a goal 60 seconds in. Mm. And it was just one of those, like, you just try your try to be competitive with those teams and just keep trying to tell yourself, like, you're right there, you're right there, you're right there. Right. Um, but, I mean, Kearsarge was good. Kearsarge yeah. was really good. And I, I told the coach at the end of the game, like, you have a really good group. There's some things you should, you know, if you're going to take one thing away from what I have to tell you, like, just limit, the, limit that trash talk a little bit because yeah. you're not going to get yourself that, you know, reputation that, that you want. And when you have a good team, I mean, like you guys have played Guilford a ton. Yeah. Those kids don't trash talk yes, they do. a little bit, but it's not like, <laughs> it's not it's like good. to that. It's not to that level no. where it crosses the line. Right. right. Like, and you can, you can, you could get absolutely, you could lose to Dave by one or get murdered by Dave. Right. And at the end of the day, he'll still talk to you like, yeah. like you're a human being and help however, you know, you need it. Right. Yeah. And not like Kearsarge coach is a young, was a young kid. So it was just trying to give him like, Hey, if you're going to take something like you got to do, this is the one thing <laughs> yeah. you need to, yeah. you need to change because it's just, yeah. I mean, and that's what and you want to do is like, as you get older as a coach, right. you just want to kind of like, Hey, this, you don't, you want to avoid the situation that one of us may or may not right. have been in at some right. point down the road. Foley's been doing that for about five or six years now, you know, monitoring <laughs> younger coaches. And... <laughs> we, we try, <laughs> but it's one of the things like, and, and I'm, I'm not oblivious to the fact that I, I know my guys trash talk and, and when you, when you see it as a coach, you I'm I'm usually quick to either say something right away or if they're on the other side of the field and I see them jawing, I'm I'm pulling them out of a game yeah. right then and there and then go and look I'm gonna pull them out for two seconds, I'm gonna throw them right back in, but they know going back in that that lead, coach, that, yeah, there's short, that short string is <laughs> yeah. not this coach enough. isn't gonna be happy yeah. with you. Yeah. And that coach, two seconds will either easily grow. Well, yeah. well, but it, but it also, it's just, I, I preach an enormous amount of, of just the aspect of what can you control and you can control what you say every single moment of every game. Oh, absolutely. And therefore you, you can't control what the referees do. You can't control what the other team is going to do to a degree, but you, you are capable of controlling yourself. You're capable of controlling what you say. And if your go-to when you're tired or you've got nothing left in the tank is to start talking trash, then I, I don't need you. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, there's no place for it, really. No. Right. I mean, and that goes back to the whole you know sportsmanship thing mm-hmm. and all that. But we can talk about that on yeah. more of an extended topic on another episode. <laughs> sportsmanship uh, for another day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Save that for the off season. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> but uh, last game of the week we covered was that prospect for volleyball and prospect beat them three, nothing, but it was something that happened pregame that made that I'm still just blown away by is my crew and I were, we were going to show up six o'clock game, show up at five fifteen, right? I, I'm the guy who shows up four hours early, but that's my issue. Um, they show up at 5.15, and the varsity crew is already warming up. The JV game took 45 minutes. Wow. Yep. And I walk in, and I'm just like, holy! <laughs> like I'm like, oh, my gosh, we have 15 minutes to get set up, and we got set up and got it going. But, like, it, that was, yeah. like, holy cow. Well, show up for the JV games from now on. Oh, I mean. Yeah, because yeah, wow. of, what, were, what were you covering before that? Nothing. It was, yes. a very, it was a very, <laughs> it was very, it was a very slow Friday, kind I would of. think. I right? just, yeah, with, I mean, I think with Columbus Day weekend, there's yeah. not yeah. out in the trailers. Yeah, okay. is no, no, the trailer he, was on. He was rewatching the Guilford Campbell. was on. <laughs> <laughs> no, the trailer didn't even go. My truck was in the shop getting oil undercoated. Ah, oh. uh, yeah. 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 TMI yeah. guy, TMI. What? To, to tri- that next trip to Berlin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. For when it snows, but uh, no, it, that was just like a, a like 
Yeah. Because that had never happened to me before with, you know, basketball, your JV games are usually an hour and a half because they're controlled. Volleyball games, maybe an hour at most, Mm -hmm. but 45 minutes for three sets. That was insane. Serve point. Serve point. And I mean, if you're, (laughs) if you're on the other side and I don't mean, there's a little bit of like timeouts per se, like Mm -hmm. in baseball, like I can go out to the mound a certain amount of times before it gets a little bit excessive, but soccer, you don't have that luxury to to stop it and just get everyone to calm down. Like if you're in a situation where you know, you're getting blown out, what you can only call timeout and say what, you know what I mean? (laughs) Like you can only say so much. So in that instance, I mean, as a JV coach, it's Friday of a long weekend. You're probably just going to let the let Ride put all the out. put all the right. chips on the table yeah. and be like, hey, if we can if we can steal one and drag this out, sure. But if not, I mean, yeah. you can you can talk to your blue in the face, but. right? But at least for us on the pro- like production side of things, like a soccer game, you have to play eighty minutes, you know, unless you're JV. But like for or nine times out of ten, I know what you're thinking about <laughs> one game we talked about. Oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, Newfound, yeah. yeah. But um, nine times out of ten, you have a ninety minute slot with a halftime that you can plan for with volleyball that was like i said the first time that i was like well it's one of those it's one of the very few high school sports or sports in general where there's no timing yeah right so the the time limits themselves are very kind of wishy-washy because i mean we're four o'clock start you're playing for an hour and a half or you know baseball there's not real time limit because you have your innings but like lacrosse football basketball hockey i mean those are all right I mean, this is your time that you're playing for. Go get it. Yeah. Right. And at least with, like, baseball and softball, you know, you have to play at least four or five innings depending on the right. the, the, the sport. Yeah, and and it, you know. depending on, you know, if the teams are good. I mean, I've played, you know, I've been a part of some really good games that are seven innings that take less than 90 minutes. Right. right. And I've also been a part of some five-inning games that take four hours. Oh, yeah. So it's just one of those, like, it's, a, it's fun. But right. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's enjoyable if you're on the right side of it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, I mean. There's, there's always that. <laughs> those sports that don't have timing, I mean, they're they're really quick. I mean, I went down in, on Saturday and watched um, our football team play, uh, play Epping. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the first half took, you know, probably 45 minutes. And the second half, we scored a touchdown. It was running time. Yeah. So I mean, the game the game itself was probably not as long as it took to drive down there. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. and it's just one of those and one of those things. It's bizarre because soccer has a mercy rule, but the mercy rule is okay. We won't stop the, the clock. clock. Yeah, you still you, you're still playing forty minutes. <laughs> but even yeah. with that, you're still it's still going to run. It's not yeah okay. They won't stop the clock on a goal, but. Or they won't stop the clock on subbing and all that stuff in the last five minutes, but it's it's not changing it. No, it's yeah. not changing the outcome. Like where you no. know, with basketball a few years ago, when they changed it, you know, the whole fourth quarter is running time. If it's a certain right. point differential, like you could be down ten nothing in soccer qu- quickly. Yeah, but you still have to play yeah. 40, forty minutes. minutes you know that right. you have to play that entire second half. Right. It's just like, I mean, I've been on the side of it, just getting absolutely slaughtered. And you're just like, how much more do you want to go? Yeah. Like, because at this yeah. point, like, there's nothing I'm doing as a coach that is going to try to change that around. Right. Like, you right. can't, you you literally can't do anything that's no. going to make it right. no. to make it different. Because you know, if you score two, what's that doing? That's just yeah. allowing the other team to go get two more. Yeah. Because well, you're still at that. that you're still at that. You know, you're at that sportsmanship yeah. issue. But at <laughs> the same time, it's like, I I I've only ever twice in my career have my team scored have put 10 on a team and both times were honest to be fair to those players the flukiest of fluky goals where i'm gonna let a team score nine and then a few years ago we had at i'm gonna say 10 minutes into the second half we're up nine nothing over summersworth and we we literally played yeah, just keep possession, away, yeah. possession right. for thirty minutes and 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 the the coach for Summersworth at the time was was great and because I think we had probably ten minutes left and we both looked at each other and he was like he goes I I don't need to do this anymore do you and I go I'd probably be better that if we yeah, would just, if call just it. If you ended, yeah. and then you you were you know getting a referee's attention to to go look blow the whistle, call the game. No one's going to be upset that we played 10 minutes less. Yeah, right. 
And and the guy kind of hemmed and hawed at it. And both coaches and I were like, just end it. Yeah. Just, we're good. You know, don't worry about the fans. Well, an, we'll, we'll an, take care an of official yeah. an official soccer game is good at halftime anyway. Right, right. Well, I mean, it wouldn't he wouldn't be hemming and hawing if it's you know a thunderstorm coming right. in and right. like whereas as a coach if it's one nothing at halftime you yeah. want to play that second forty exactly. if you're you know if it's close and it's raining but like I've only I've only had it happen once on the good side yeah. right. where you get to nine and it's like. It's the same thing in baseball. Like you just feel not necessarily like gross about it, yeah. but at the same time, you're like, it's not, it's not helping you. It's not helping your guys. Like you're going to get some kids who have no real right, right. being in the offensive third. Right. You're going to get those guys some opportunities yeah. to, to enjoy themselves, but to what expense? Like you're yeah. not, like it's not reasonable for your team. It's not great for the other team to, to you know, watch your second string backup goalie. <laughs> score a goal you know, on a fast. I mean, that's the only time it's ever happened. I mean, I've been on the other side of it. I've been, I can count. I can't keep track of the amount of times I've been on the other side of yeah. the, you know, seven, eight, nine. But I mean, Campbell beat us 11, nothing in the playoffs last year. Wow. In, <gasps> in the pouring rain and the coach and the coach is like, Oh, I'm sorry. I told him to stop. And it's like, yeah, it's fine, man. Like in a regular season game, I'd have been upset. Yeah. I'd have been like, okay, like this is too much, but it's playoffs. Damn. Like it's a playoff game. You guys are, you know, we're in, you're in, you're the better team. Like, if you want to send a statement to everybody else in the division, they're going to look at it in two ways. One, you're really good. Or two, that's a very ca- a classless move. Yeah, right. And like at the same time, it's like, if you want to go for the throat in a playoff game, who am I to be like, no, nah, yeah. don't do that. <laughs> I mean, you're the better team for, for a reason. Yeah. But like, See, my comment to him after that would have been, you, if you don't win it, this this was all for naught because <laughs> yeah. I know right. Oh well, well I, I'm gonna follow you. <laughs> well, <laughs> and when un- you lose in the finals, which they did, yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, they like, did. yeah, they did to, to Trinity, which is another topic for another day. Yeah, <laughs> realistically, I mean, not just what's going on with them, but like just prep schools in in general um, yeah. has just always been a hot topic for yeah. no, never. At, at least I know, no. like it's just a it's a tip, it's just a tough mm-hmm. a tough draw for. You you're know, for a, us. You're a semi-private slash public school that's allowed to recruit. That's not recruiting, though. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's uh, hey, you want to come here for a better education? Also, we have a basketball team that could yeah. take some money off your tuition. Well, <laughs> well and it's like I was t- I was talking <laughs> to a parent about it the other day. Not to really get into it, but like, you know, those private schools that have the 350 kids or some, you know, some mm-hmm. 350 to 400. I mean, we're the one of the smaller D3 schools, like. If we had to hand pick 300 kids for an athletic based grouping, probably not taking that group. Right. Like, if you have the opportunity to go out and find 300 kids that are going to help your program, your school, et cetera, you're probably going to be able to go that route. Right. So, right. it's just one of those things that if you want to play an all high school schedule, go play Concord, Pinkerton, right. Bishop yeah. Curtin, go play yeah. D1. Because you're having that same kind of talent pool to, to choose and, from. And that's where they, like a, like a Trinity, used to be a D1 school mm. with 400 kids. And they, they are in some sports. Right, right. And when this change occurred with, you know, how you... Petition up and down. Yeah, is, is made it, and how you can petition up and down in different sports is, is the part that, that'll forever drive me nuts because... Again, in you know, 2012, we lost to to Bo one nothing in a state championship game, and the following year the, they were probably back up into division they're up two. back up into division two and and near the top of division <laughs> two. And I'm going for the love of you know, but again, you know, even yeah. in that in that year, you know, we we had chances in that game. I was gonna say, so. I remember it was what was 2016 when Bo moved divisions or whatever yeah. and like the girls soccer there was like new people in the finals and right. I remember my my friend Brianna was like wow this is like it's because Bo moved yep. I'm like literally yeah. like like had they not moved it would have been Bo and three others sure you know and that's sure. usually how that's usually how it works I yeah. mean we talk about Guilford all the time but like if that was any other program for the 30 some odd years that Dave was there I mean they would have gone up in division yeah. two just because it's based on you know, like it happened to Laconia girls basketball. They're blowing everybody out in Division Three. Right. Uh, go up into Division Two. Right. The boys, well, the boys hoops well, team was still in Division Three for the look, longest time. Look at Guilford volleyball. Yep. Oh, yeah. They they dominated. Won eight, nine, ten championships in a row in Division Three, and then the state went no. You're, yeah. You're, or I shouldn't say the state. I think they wanted the competition. Went to Division Two. Yeah. 
but I think part of that was that their their hand was forced. When Dave won 10 championships in a row through the late 80s and 90s, no one was saying, oh, I you should guys should, you should, should, go, up should yeah. go up a division. Well, and it, happened to, it happened to win a squad volleyball, too. I mean, right. they had a yeah. window where they were incredibly good, and they were blowing everybody out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they go up into Division two. Yeah. I mean, it happened to our it happened to our football team, like, yeah. and that realistically should be kind of like, and I get like, you know, like you guys had a great stretch. Yep. What was it, four or five years ago? And you had like Doug Price and Embry and yep. and you know all those really good athletic kids, regardless of the sport. Right. I mean, if you guys had gone, you know, that four year stretch and won forty five, forty six games, and then all of a sudden they're like, all right, well you're going into yeah. Division two. And not saying that the guys you have now are not to that caliber, right. but that's not going to necessarily help your program no. if you go basically on the coattails of, you know, what, some of what the came other. Before. Yeah. Right. right. And yeah. that's the tough part. And that's where, you know, our football team has felt that yeah. the last few years because they're in a larger division. Yeah. But when we were playing all the area schools, it wasn't, it wasn't close. So right. we'll give, we'll give Devin another topic for another time, but the, the, I <laughs> should but start the, writing these down. Hold on. Should, I can't believe you're not taking notes, <laughs> but, but the idea of, of it, more so in soccer, we'll, we'll just, we'll focus on soccer, but just the, the idea of relegation. You know, if you're, you know, if you're at the top, you know, last two years, Trinity wins the state championship and they're gone. Yeah. Um, you know, whatever. It, but if you're also, if you're a Manchester West, um, who else is at the bottom? Um, teams that haven't won a game this well, year. I mean, it, I mean, it, you but, hate to say it, but like the Summersworth, the Franklins. Yeah. But like a Summersworth didn't have a program this year. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's, that's that's telling where where a lot of schools are at we and, and i know you think i sold you a bag of goods but you know we <laughs> yeah. we started the season what day you, day you, one 11 with kids, 11 yeah. kids yeah. show up yeah. and you go wait a minute what happened and and it wasn't until you know school started which was two and a half weeks later that i got four or five more guys who finally could show up because yeah. work was gone, vacations, yeah. all that stuff was done. And you're like, Oh my God, we're, we're going to, in my head, I'm going to start the season that we're, we're going to get crucified because I'm going to be forced to rely on. And thank God I had them, but freshmen and sophomores who weren't necessarily ready for it, but worked their tails off to be ready for it. And, and produced, um, and therefore, you know, we, we had some early season success until my, and realistically, it was juniors and seniors who finally showed up and gotten into which game, is, in game shape, game shape yeah. which you and I know is totally different from, oh, coach, hi, I'm here. I'm ready to play. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. no, you're not. And it's not like going to play like pick up basketball or something like that all year where, yeah. you know, it's five on five and you can get a blow for, right. you know, a five, six minutes stretch and go back out. I mean, you can't necessarily... There's very, very few kids, and I can only really talk about my program, but I have a couple that I know for sure when they come into me, they haven't done anything. Right. They might touch a ball a little bit, but they haven't run. And then as soon as we go and we're starting to do the two mile, they're in the top 10 every single time. They're just that different breed yeah. of, of child that can just not necessarily be lazy, mm-hmm. but they don't have to work to get into shape. It's right. like a light switch. Yeah. But for every one of those you have, <laughs> you've got another. Nice. You've got another twenty <laughs> that have to physically be running for two or, or three weeks yeah. before the season starts. So game shape isn't necessarily game shape for, like you said. I right. mean, two weeks. If you have kids showing up two weeks after, you're two, thrown into the fire two right weeks away. Behind. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. they're and they're gasping. And those kids, those kids, you know, in that first two weeks of when they're even eligible to play, you go, okay, go go play. But I know I can only use you for 20, 30 yeah. minutes yeah. Yeah. before yeah. you're dying and yeah. going, I can't, I can't. And then you're like, okay, here yeah. you go. Let's, yeah. let's give you your, your 10 minute breather. And then it turns into a 20 minute breather. And then, yeah. gosh, I still can't feel my legs. And well, like, that's where, I mean, we're in that stretch. I mean, we've, I've never, I've never like switched my lineup as much as I've ha- ever had this mm-hmm. year. <laughs> like usually it's like this is my goalie for the whole year. This is the your you know, these are my defenders for you know, sixteen games. Yeah. Like I've 
I've taken the, not the names out of a hat, but we've basically gone to that approach. Mm -hmm. Like here's our 12 or 13 go-to guys. What organization pattern can we get to make it be successful? Right. And there's been guys that are just like, Dan, I can't, I can't play a full 80. Yeah. I can't play a full 40. Yeah. I'm like, I need one. I need one. It's like, Oh God, like I, yeah. can you give me another five minutes? Like the, we're almost done. They're like, no, I can't give you, yeah. like I've given you everything we've got. Like I have left. And yeah. the same thing, like we were at prospect mountain. It was a one, one tie. We played a double overtime and we had a couple of kids that were just like, Dan, I can't go. Yeah. Uh, they're like, put somebody else in. Like I, I can't, I can't do it. Which to a high school kid, you got to give them credit because yeah. most of the time they're just going to go back in and they're not going to say anything until after the fact. Right, they're going right. to be like, Dan, I couldn't, like, my, you know, I had a problem with my foot or I was gassed. And to have them be like, no, put someone else in that, that it's takes, a lot. yeah, it takes it's a, a lot. lot of ownership. And um, we're in that, sh it's a tough, it's a tough bad. And then, you know, soccer is, you know, you've got two games or sometimes three a week where you just kind of be like, all right, well, here's, you almost have to pick like your rest day. Yeah. But at the same time, like I, we've had this running joke for, for two years now, at least, um, uh, anytime, like I want to make the guys run at the end of practice, like not a ton, but like enough to just kind of like keep their, keep whatever shape they're still in. And they'll instantly go, Oh, I guess our game tomorrow is canceled. Because it, because they're like, oh well, we we play tomorrow, so should today should be a rest day. It's yeah. like, oh my god, yeah. come on, guys! Like the first couple times, it's funny, but after that, I'm just like, can you stop with that? Well, <laughs> we we train today, right? yeah, because we we play tomorrow, and I'm I'm usually a big proponent of you know, day before a game is walkthroughs. It's it's this we're gonna we're gonna deal with set pieces and and that kind of stuff, and it's it's relatively easy, but. You haven't, as players, haven't seen me since last Tuesday. And you've had three days, and, and my JV cook, Pedro, is, is he's fantastic. phenomenal. Yeah. I love him. And and he's, I get daily notes, you know, from him on, on training. It's like, hey, this went well, this went, this didn't, this, but they're, it's awesome. Yeah. And, but there's a big difference between Pedro and when coach, coach shows there, up. Yeah. And coach shows up, and then all of a sudden guys are like, Okay, what are we doing today? And so, like, in my mind today, we're training. We, we yeah. are training today because we, we haven't – they haven't touched the ball in three days. And the yeah, worst thing you guys, in the world – I mean, you had a JV game. We had a JV game Friday. Right. So my varsity guys, for the most part, were off right. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We're practicing this afternoon. Right. But That first day of touching a ball after three days is – Ugly. It's, horrific because yeah. <laughs> you're like you forgot how to play in three days <laughs> and uh and that's always the word like i i, I never ever want to see a monday game on my schedule because it's just it's awful and uh but as we you know i know what's coming today you know for training and it's going to be ugly and it's and you got to work out the kinks you got to but they also are prepping now for me they're prepping these next two weeks as we go through this week of, of training yeah. that you've you look, you're going to, we're going to go out and attempt to do and play a very specific way tomorrow against a newfound team that we should be able to play a certain way. And, and it's about kind of putting what it is we want to do on a newfound team yeah. and impose our will. If you will, yeah, and you, I mean, like you know, I mean, Jason, you've you've coached against Jason yeah. for years, so you know exactly what yeah. that particular style is going to be. Yeah. So not necessarily uh, changing like your how you guys want to play, yeah. but just adapting to how you know, not necessarily park the bus, but mm -hmm. necessarily like how the how to adapt right. to that style that yeah. you know it's not necessarily the same as like when you play us where we don't. No. Well, we have a lot of free flowing guys. There's not a lot of, no. there's probably not enough guys in the back yeah. at times. Like that's a different type of, yeah. of coaching style. La it's funny. Last year was the first time I ever contemplated parking the bus <laughs> against, against I remember, Guilford. I remember, I remember this conversation. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm like, I think I might do it. I think. And then as we got closer to that game, I was like, I've never done it. Why am I doing it yeah. now? So just it always it always sounds like a fantastic idea, and then you think about it, and you're like, they're already in our end already anyway. Yeah. Like, I don't want them to be in my end any more than <laughs> they have to be. Right. But it's the same thing. I mean, they they attack 
with so many guys yeah. that even when you do get a chance to clear it, it their back line is right there and it's yeah. right back in. Right. So there's some really... Now, for those people out there who don't know what park the bus means, is it literally parking and walking or like, what do you we, mean? We have, <laughs> so in, in years past, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll pick on Newfound, um, we've, we've had game where, where the years where I had the Doug Price, the Corey DeRochers, and those, those guys. Yeah, Cole and all those guys, were, yeah. I mean, we were a very, very strong team. Um, they would, you know, the team would blow the opening whistle and legitimately 10 guys would drop back inside the 18. You would keep one guy up at midfield and any ball that came into them, they just cleared it long gotcha. for hope and pray that that one kid would, would get a break. Um, and then you spent your game trying to, you know, target practice, you know, trying to shoot around 10 guys in the box, which is, it's not easy. Right. And so you, you attempt to, it takes you probably 20 minutes to kind of figure out because you just don't, nothing's open. And so gotcha. you have okay. to play small little touch passes and try to get, try to get in close. And in years past, Jason's had some really good goalies. Yeah. And so you could park a bus and pack it <laughs> in and just take your chances. And um, we played them a few years ago in a, in a playoff, first round playoff game. And they scored like in the first two minutes of the game, and I went, "Uh oh," <laughs> yes, yeah. because you knew was, like they got the early goal, and that's kind of what they hoped for. Got it, and then went back to this. Everybody playing back, playing yeah. defense, and hoping, praying that they would, you know, hold on to it. And, gotcha. Okay. I mean, their yeah. their goalie this year was fantastic. I mean, we only played it once, and. It was at our place, and you know they had Josh up top, and he's fast. He's yeah. probably one of the faster kids I've seen in a long time. And uh, like I said earlier, I mean they, we shot 16, 17 times yeah. and scored once, and the goal we scored was beautiful. It was yeah. a really nice goal. But once they got the lead, Josh was up top, and it's the same kind of thing. Like if you have a really good goalie, and they do, I mean he's one of the better. He's one of the better ones I've seen, you know, this season. Uh, Wait till you see Hillsborough. Oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> telling you. Uh, but it's like the same thing. Like, if you have a kid that, like, it can stop it, you, it makes it a lot more difficult because yeah. you're not getting that clean shooting opportunity right. because you have to, like, not necessarily thread the needle, but you're trying to basically thread a needle to, to get one into the back to try to get them out of that yeah. that yeah. parking mentality. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh. I just figured for the people out there who no. would go, wait, are we parking the bus a mile away right. and walking up? Right. Like, what do you mean park right. the bus? No, it's just it's a defensive strategy. Gotcha. And, now, know, now I'm going to see that. One of my games is going to be like, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> They're parking the bus. Yeah, you, you can <laughs> use that in your broadcast. Yeah, yeah, now I got the terminology. Yeah. But, and you know soccer well enough to know that you know most teams are going to play a flat four. They're going to play a sweeper stopper. They may, like every... Well, we haven't. We, we were actually attempting to do it this year. We were going to play a three-four-three, three and we decided not to not to go that route. Which was it's it's been good for us not to. But in years past, I've I've played three uh, in the back. Um, anytime you start seeing that second, third midfielder keep dropping back, it, you just you know it's on. Mm. Okay. And some teams that are it, you know if you got a, a weak team and you get an early goal. You may go. I think we can make this last, and yeah. you you do your best to to do that. It's a very defensive maneuver. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not easy. No, no it's not, I mean, it's it's, not easy. To I mean, do. not that that was our mentality when we played gear Sarge, but I mean, we scored in the first five minutes. Yeah. And I was never, I never once turned to the guys. I'm like, all right, maybe we should turn this into a four five one, right. and just and just kind of go. I'm like, we went in knowing gear Sarge was going to be pretty solid, and we were just like, oh, we'll just stick it as a four a four four two. Yeah. And just play it like normal until we can't play it like normal anymore. Right. And, you know, for the most part, the only time we really had to to not necessarily park the bus but pull a guy back was I had a couple of guys who were just gassed. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, you're not – like you're just pulling them back to to help right. per se. But at the same time, you're like, all right, kind of like you, you never – as you know, it, my personal opinion, it is awful yeah. when the ball's in your – 30 yards and in for 10 minutes straight, yeah. mm -hmm. let alone 35 minutes straight or 40 minutes yeah. straight. Like it's, it's, it's stressful. It's a lot. And yeah. you know, like a fluky goal can, 
instantly change momentum and yeah. yeah it's a tough it's tough to do we went we went to fall mountain uh earlier in the season and uh uh went up uh, again I, for whatever reason every team we've played this year has had their goalkeeper just stand on their head <laughs> and uh um this this kid from fall mountain was was fantastic but we peppered peppered their this goalie uh, and my concern at, you know, 10 minutes left in the game was that because of the field conditions, they were going to get something, a fluke goal, and we're going to lose one nothing. And and then we, we finally, finally tucked, legitimately tucked one in off the right corner crossbar, barred down off the post yeah. and in. Huh. And was a like, beautiful goal. And was like, oh, okay, okay I can <laughs> oh, breathe. But okay. then for 10 minutes I'm going – don't get a fluke. I don't want to go to overtime. <laughs> I don't yeah. want to be in an overtime. And so, good times. For sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, we're at an hour and 40 minutes. That was easy. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually just texted one of my friends and said, we're almost two hours now. I don't think these guys are coming to an end anytime soon. <laughs> but so <laughs> let's. Why did you text me that? <laughs> yeah, I didn't get that either. I think these guys will ever end. Yeah, I, think, I don't know. I think oh, these guys will stop talking eventually. Like, I mean, well, and I mean, like, like <laughs> no, we talked kidding. about, like, with this being the first one. I mean, we have, like, we talked about the games we played this week, but at the same time, like, you still got to talk about how you've got to this point. Right. right. Like, no. Yeah. So for it's, sure. It's the first one will be a little longer. I say it's a pilot show for sure. I mean, and once we get going a little bit more, we'll get, maybe we even get like a timer where it's like, okay, we got 10 minutes to talk about last week. All right, moving on. You know, okay. And then, Have um, you ever seen that show Around the Horn? No. Wait. Yes. Where, on ESPN, it's got the clock. Right. Five o'clock. Yeah. Ding, next topic. All right, that's what I'll do. Yeah. I'll get one. Yeah. Yeah, nice. So it's like 90 seconds. You talk about everything. You yeah. get points. Yeah, I like, like get points. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, he's giving points? Yeah. Ooh. You're, you're going to win. <laughs> Dan's going to win. I'm not getting any points. <laughs> Somehow we're in a tie. I don't uh, know how. I know, right? Weird. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, it's, okay, so by the way, I forgot to mention, we're recording this on the 10th of October. Um, meant to and say that in the beginning. Yeah. I just realized you guys are like, oh, yeah, we're playing tomorrow. And yeah. it's going to probably release tomorrow, the yeah. 11th. So I don't want people being like, Belmont's. Oh, I showed up to Belmont Bel to yeah, yeah. for yeah. their game. I'm, I'm showing up here. on Wednesday to watch a game. <laughs> what happened? But um, anyways, so, I mean, now let's finish off with just looking ahead. You guys, guys have already kind of talked about, you know, Belmont's playing Newfound and White Mountains, Interlakes, Hillsborough, Deering, and Farmington Newt. You guys kind of already talked about that. Um, before well, we, we talk about so what I'm real, doing, real quick, like we, so we we have not seen Newfound this year, yep. and so this is this will be our only opportunity with them. And then Friday we're home against White Mountains, and we we played White Mountains early in the season. Um, they were missing a couple of kids in that game. We beat them four nothing, but I was still at that point of that was actually the first game that a senior and a junior of mine like got minutes. Mm. That was that was their first opportunity to play. So I'm not going to have one of those kids because of his beautiful lack of focus, lack yes. of focus. Lack of focus. <laughs> and uh, yeah. uh, and so, you know, it, it'll it'll be a different game um, for us mainly because, again, you know, at least we're home. And right. they're a different they're a different team than they were three weeks ago. Right. They're they're playing much better. I mean, they're. The first, they probably had a, they had a tough stretch yeah. to to start the season. I mean, I watched them play uh, Berlin for their up, you know, those two homecoming games, mm -hmm. just so I could watch Berlin before we had you know seen them. And they're when we played them, they were not necessarily like laid back on the defensive end, but they didn't shoot. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't. There weren't many shooting opportunities. Period. Right. And you know, watching them play Berlin. I mean, they tied him the second time, but the first time they went up there and they beat him five, nothing. And, and it was, <laughs> you know, anytime they were inside the attacking third, like they're getting a shot on goal. Yeah. And I don't necessarily know if Berlin just took it lightly because of their record, but they're much better now than they were the first time you right. guys had played them. And that right. when you play a team twice, it's hard to not necessarily overlook the first time you played them, but you got to know uh, it's usually a much different right. team right. than the right. second time you played them. Yeah, yeah, especially when uh, the local production company films both games. <laughs> One team can go back and rewatch and say, okay, this is what they did. Let's fix that. Well, you, you, know, you, have, and you have the opportunity to fix, you know, certain things. And, and again, you know, look, you know, over the course of a season, injuries 
do take right. a toll on teams and you know guys that you might be counting on you know for friday potentially could get hurt tomorrow right yeah. and yeah. that that throws throws off any kind of game plan that you say, yeah. you may put out so covid taught us a lot can happen in five days yeah you know yeah. whether it be huge sickness huge. or twisted ankle yep. or didn't turn in homework on time right you know or something as simple as that i, I just like i know prior to practice tonight i'm down two starters tomorrow Jeez. so it's you just kind of go um sounds right. like it'll be a good game then I'm also, I mean, I'm, I'm going into the same boat. And tomorrow we play, you know, Hillsborough Deering for the first time ever in our program. I've yeah. never, I've played them a couple times in baseball, but for soccer, never, never had, it's never happened. And we're in the same boat. I mean, I'm sure one starter already off, off the, off the top. I mean, not, it's similar to the lack of focus, but yeah. it's a lack of focus for a few different periods. <laughs> um, but it's the same thing. Like mm-hmm. he's one of our better players. We're already short. I have guys who are are sick. I mean, we just had sandwich fair for the last three days. Yeah. So these, you know, that whatever game shape they were in end of Thursday is probably not the same shape. They're coming <laughs> in to me today at four o'clock. What are you talking fried about? Dough. I was going to say fried dough fried. doesn't. Oh, give I know. Me, and like, whatever, and whatever laps they walked around up there yeah. isn't at the same speed that it probably would have been <laughs> if I was falling. Fried along. dough does not give you wings. It doesn't. No. I was just curious. <laughs> you know, does, does I wasn't sure. Neither if it gave does you a boost. Red Bull. Well, yeah, but say, like, so geez. that means we're in the same boat. So like, we've never played, <laughs> we've never played Hillsboro, and then we yeah. go to Farmington on on friday and not that like that should be a win because we've beaten them already but like i we it was one of those we started late and it was raining so you're trying to get that result early on the off chance that you right. end at halftime so we took a lot of shots we took a lot of corners the result was good for us but the score wasn't necessarily what it could Indicative have been of, or should have yeah. been because it was three to two I don't necessarily know what it's going to be like over at Farmington. Right. I mean, it's a grass field. They play a couple of different sports on it. It's the end of the season. It's raining today. Like yeah. it could be a tough, it could be kind of a tougher, a tougher spot. So, yeah. I mean, it's, or it could be exactly what you think it's going to be. Yeah. Got it. You got to love live sports, right? Like, well, that's why you play. Well, you got, yeah. That's yeah. why you play because I mean, I mean, in the spring, everybody was kind of not necessarily like overlooking us, but like I didn't, know, I thought we were good. But when we played White Mountain the first time and we lost two to one and we gift wrapped them their two runs, I was like, we can, like, we can hang with this team. And they had a kid who was going, you know, he's at UMaine right now <laughs> and we should have beat him twice. Yeah. So, I mean, that was that kind of turning point that like as a coach, like, as a coaching staff, you're kind of looking, yeah. uh, looking for. And in this fall, I mean, we've battled some of those tough teams, you know, throughout the year. We're just hoping that like, we're just looking for that one result. Yeah. that is going to kind of propel us forward a little bit more as opposed to kind of like mm-hmm. treading water where we're at right, right now. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, I wish you both luck this week. Thank you. It should be a good week for you guys. Appreciate it. For us, we got tomorrow, we have a kind of a short week. I actually go to Vermont twice this week for unathletic or non-athletic events. Um, we're covering some scenery recitals at Castleton. Nice. And that's cool. But, um, Tomorrow we got boys soccer, Berlin at Prospect Mountain. I don't know how that game's going to go. What do you guys think? Berlin, Prospect, boys Prospect's soccer. Prospect's playing well. They've, they've. Yeah, you just saw them last week, right? We at saw homecoming? them at homecoming, homecoming? Um, and beat them 2-1. They scored an early goal, um, and we had to battle. Um, and, we, and, you know, it was the, the one time, I think, this season where we, in the second half, we just we turned it up uh, a little bit and just were relentless for a good 15 minute stretch and uh, got a got a really nice goal and then the you know the it, three minutes later got the second goal mm. so it was it was quick um, but they're they're a very different team from the we opened the season with them and beat them two one yeah but they were without a kid uh, in that game and my lord he's he's a difference maker. <laughs> Uh, for them and and we had to contend with that uh all game all all game trying to trying to keep him at bay and and actually in that game we gave up a pk um and you know jacob it's the we've only given up two pks all year and he um he stopped he stopped them both he's got to be one of the better ones in division three by far i mean i know it's a little early for all state but he's got my vote for sure he's and i've seen i mean i've seen some pretty good goalies so far this year i mean when you're playing the top teams obviously they've got 
a decent one. If, you know, you don't win games by scoring six goals. If you get, you know, still got to prevent them. Yeah. I mean, Prospect's good. Prospect's yeah. a decent program. I mean, yeah. they got a really good coach over there. He's he's doing a lot of really good things. Um, It'll be a good game. I, yeah, I mean, Berlin was good too. Berlin was. I mean, we played both those teams. Berlin was tough. I mean, it was one nothing, but. It could have very. I mean, we dominated them in the second half, yeah. and I don't necessarily know if it was illness or I you know they've got a couple of guys who are banged up that might be back. Um, it's is it at prospect? Must be if it's you're at covering prospect. It. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> must be if nice. you. Wow, uh, that, that hurts. That hurts. Sure. 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 I, I would probably you know, I'd probably have to take prospect on yeah. that one. No, I mean I think as and I mean and for somebody who's trying to sneak into the playoffs, I mean prospects is they're much higher up in the standings than we are, and Berlin and I are. Are fairly close. Yeah. I mean, for me personally, <laughs> I gotta have root for a Prospect Mountain uh, win there. No, I mean, I I only have seen Prospect play more difficult teams, such as you know Guilford and uh, Intertwell. <laughs> I was gonna say you saw. Wait him, a minute, you saw him play us. <laughs> Wait a minute, I mean, hold on a minute. No, that was but, a compliment. Well, that was that yeah. was a win for us, yeah. by yeah. the way. No, that but was I mean, a, that was a win tie. <laughs> we've only seen them a couple of times, you know, and it should have been two one, but that's beside the point. Um, but. Uh, <laughs> But um, no. But I, I mean, I'm excited, I'm, yeah. and it works for us because we have a guaranteed audience. Nobody from Berlin's driving down for a three thirty start. Yeah, they will. Just yeah, Berlin travels. They travel well. Berlin travels. They do extremely they do. well. We We've had people been bouncing on our website all morning so far, checking the work out we're in so the game tomorrow. That's good. Our uh, our girls actually played Berlin at home uh, Monday, the mm-hmm. day before we went there, and. It was it was a mostly Berlin fan base, and it's yeah. the same thing. It's a four o'clock start, which is tough for for some parents to get to at times. Mm-hmm. But it was a lot of Berlin fans yeah. that mm-hmm. made the the track down. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, they, they travel well. It's they a really it's do. a hockey town, and they will they will travel and they will support yeah. regardless of the distance they have to go. Yeah. Well, then on Tuesday or Thursday, right? Yeah, the thirteenth is Thursday. Um, we got Sauhegan at Laconia and boy soccer. I'll be a good game. They're, yeah, I was going to say, they're very similar, so, very similar records, very similar. Really? Yeah. Um, so down, say, then. I was going to say, I was going to say, it's not a very good record, but they're, yeah. um, so I'm excited. That's a 4 o'clock start, the prospect game, 3.30. And then on Friday, we got a doubleheader, including, which this is going to be cool, we got volleyball at prospect. We're covering, sorry, the heat just turned off. Um, they we got, got the, the sign. They got the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gonna start smoking us out or freezing us out. We got the varsity game at six, and then we're gonna cover the JV game at four thirty. Um, and that this is because we're doing what we're calling a players only broadcast. Oh, so cool. we have two of the varsity players coming to announce the JV game. Awesome. Um, so I'm excited. Um, it's a nice when, way to get you know other people future, involved. Yeah. Future broadcast. Oh yeah, so. I mean yeah, yeah, exactly. But no, more or less like I've seen some of my. The prefer- won't do that for soccer though. No. You know. Well, See how he is. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's <laughs> well and it's I mean it's like like we had talked about, I mean, with the two of us with limited J V games anyway. Right. I yeah. mean at this point we played and our J V played um Kearsarge the other day and it was like forty minutes total. Yeah. So I mean it's tough to well, and it's, it's tough also, to set it all up. It's for, also difficult because like what am I gonna do? Walk over to your post game huddle regardless of what happened and say Hey, oh, I, I need a couple. Hey, guys, I need uh, I need these two. We talked pre pregame. I know you're reprimanding that, or you know whatever. Like I need them. Like you could always start the game, and we could join. You know, like yeah. it's never done a broadcast before. Well, no, no. I know. But, <laughs> <laughs> hey, now entering the booth, Foley, who talks forever. Yeah, can I mean, finally join us. There's five on. minutes left in the game. Yeah, coming, on, coming on. Coach, you beat the team seven nothing. What did you have to yell at them for? Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, well, let me tell you a story. Broadcast goes on for another hour and a half. There you go. Turn the lights off. Teams have gone home. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, and then on Saturday we got uh, football at Interlake Smolenboro. They're taking on Fall Mountain. Nice. Um, that should be a good one. I was going to say, I've, I've heard mixed reviews about that one, whether it's going to be good, whether it's going to be bad, whether it's going to be good for one team and not the other. Who knows? Be but good. it should be fun. But, yeah, so that's our schedule. Super, it's kind of a light week because of you know today being a holiday. Wednesday, I gotta go to Vermont. Actually, after that football game on Saturday, I gotta go to Vermont for another recital. I'm gonna turn around and make a seven o'clock start 
<laughs> in Vermont. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully and that's a 12 o'clock start on, yeah. on uh, Saturday. I'm hoping that that football game will get done around 2.30. This way we can pack up and get out of there by 3, 3.30 and get over to Vermont well, by luckily, 6. <laughs> luckily, the, the guy who does a scoreboard over there is very um, – Liberal with timekeeping, so really? it, it very it goes very quickly. Yeah, he. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell, tell me about it. There have been times in the production trailer. I'm like, how is he thirty seconds ahead? As yeah. I'm typing it into yeah, my I computer. Mean, we, we go we go quick over there. There's yeah. no, we don't pull any punches. We're Home trying to get it. Field and out. advantage. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but yeah, cool. so I'm excited to. This is going to be fun. This podcast. Yep. Um, like I said, going forward, we'll kind of more structure it a little bit more. I got the list of potential topics we could talk about going forward. I actually Good. wrote it down. Nice. See? Learn something. It, it, it took an hour and 30 minutes, but you finally got the notebook. Hey, I should write some of these <laughs> ideas down. Yeah. I mean, I learned something from your from class when I was a sophomore. I actually <laughs> taking notes now. It's weird. Wow. I know. What a thought. But you were um, a sophomore? Yeah, when I took wow. your economics class. Nice. Yeah. I was like, what, 15? Yeah. It was, sure you were. It was okay. a while ago. I was really young. Anyway, sixteen okay. now or seven? now sixteen? Yeah. No, I'm oh. twenty three, but Are you? Well, close, oh. close enough. All right, oh, you're pushing what sixty? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah. I was just yeah. curious. Next week. Next week? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I was gonna say I, I thought your birthday was around the Titanic. You know, <laughs> <laughs> this is good. Look at him taking good. taking shots and takes here. him all the time. Oh man, oh, yeah. well, hasn't you know, hit yet. No, <laughs> it, it, it works. It, we get there. You know, shot across the bow. Yeah. Way off. Mm-hmm. Anyways, hey, it happens. Um, any final thoughts before you know? Appropriate final thoughts. Yeah, yeah I mean, okay. it's all recorded. It's, it's up to you. You no, can. No, no. Uh, it could be edited. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We could we could scrub some things. There it is. <laughs> no, it uh, it should be a good week. Um, and uh, you know, again, it's it's just about right now. It's about it's about staying healthy and and continuing to progress. Um, you you got to. Our our push right now is is to be to be playoff ready, mm-hmm. um, which means and if yeah you know, they'll some of these guys might pay attention to this broadcast tomorrow, <laughs> so they'll know what's coming Wednesday Thursday practice because we're gonna work. I'll send it to your team. And be like, there hey, you know. listen, Coach Coach <laughs> Foley said you're working. I know. Yeah, and, <laughs> and for us, I mean, we're in two totally different places because you're. Not necessarily comfortably in, but you guys are in. Mm-hmm. Like you don't right. have to like, you know, in two weeks when the regular season ends, there's still a couple of days before that first round starts yeah. that you'll probably host because you're you're in that higher spot. Um, we're in that spot where it's like you're on the bubble. Yeah, you're on the bubble. You have to basically fight tooth and nail to to grab one of those yeah. those last few spots. And I mean, it's fun to be comfortably in Mm -hmm. but it's a little bit enjoyable to be like all right well we got four games left we gotta win two and you know when we talk we go to practice today i mean we're gonna talk about it one game at a time obviously but i mean gotta we gotta win two or four to basically guarantee our spot a good chance to right right to get in i mean we've had a couple then unfortunately you're looking for help oh yeah Yeah, absolutely i mean there's there's that's when you help and that's when we were talking about uh, berlin and prospect mountain i mean you're rooting for those teams that are that are similar records to us mm-hmm. i mean we're probably not going to get to the the you know where fall you know kearsarge hillsborough are right now at seven or eight wins like right that's going to take a miracle for us to get to that point um so we're you know we're in that boat where it's like all right this is a it's an attainable goal it's what we wanted to do um we had a tough schedule but at the same time like you still we're trying to get to that point not at like all costs but at the same time like We've got guys that are a little bit banged up. There's not really time to right. to rest that a little right. bit because we need, you know, our small hands on. Oh yeah, I need. Mm-hmm. A, I mean, I got a junior right now who's been playing through uh, a, a thigh injury that basically he plays in game and then walks through practice yeah. because there's like there's just no time to to rest that. Yeah. Right. And you know, if we're in that boat where you know we're guaranteed, you know. Eight through twelve, he's probably resting. Right. I don't need. We can we can survive and get him at full strength for for that playoff run. Whereas mm-hmm. right now we're we're trying to get in and get some help from some other from some of the other twenty teams in the division. Yeah. Right. No, for sure. Well, I don't really have anything to say on our end. We're all, we're still hiring. If anybody wants to come work a camera, there you go. There's my there's my plug for my team. But no, I mean. 
definitely. Like I said, good luck to both of you guys. Thank you. Um, looking forward to what's coming up. I don't know if I have you guys again until playoff time. Um, I think on my schedule, I don't think I have either of your teams until playoff time. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's if we even, you know, cover you guys. I might just camp out at Guilford. But, uh, you know. I mean, between all their other sports, you've got your hands tied there, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you got volleyball, football, field yeah. hockey. Yeah. Um, we'll, on, be on, we'll be on the road anyway. So. On, on that note, I do want to say that, you know, although the title is sports show, I know we talked a lot about, about, a lot about soccer today. Um, going forward, we'll, you know, as soon as the season's over, you are going to talk more about general sports, you know, basketball sure. stuff, things like that. Well, and, I mean, and, I, you cover, you're, you're at Belmont for a bunch of other things too. Yeah. It's not like it's just soccer and right. then wipe your hands of it and I'm see done. you again in the spring. What are you talking about? He, fall, does, you know? he doesn't do anything. Oh, I've heard, <laughs> I've heard, I've heard fully call basketball games in the, yeah. in the winter. Yeah, wow. I've yeah. listened to it. I've actually texted him if he was, I'm like, are you on the broadcast yeah, right now? It was, it was nice that yeah. money came into my pocket and headset was given to him. It was weird. It's good. Yeah. It's it worked good. out well. It was well. fun. But yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's, it, I know we joke, we joke a lot about it, but, uh, um, you know, doing basketball and, uh, from a broadcast standpoint, it's a blast. It's an right. absolute blast. Soon hockey last year was so much fun. Oh, yeah, I forgot fun. that you did that. So much fun. I chose um, to forget that one. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Right. I'm kidding. No, I mean, between the, between the three of us, I mean, we've seen quite a bit of, yeah. of high school sports regardless yeah. of the – if it's just soccer or baseball yeah. or whatnot. Like. But no, I wanted to just make it sure people at home knew that, you know, this wasn't just going to be the soccer yeah. show every Did you want to talk about the Yankees or is that? Well, I mean, we can talk about, you know, hey, Judge. We're, we're getting ready for, <laughs> they were. for the Cleveland Guardians right <laughs> here Tuesday yeah, night. Yeah, it's going yeah, to be gonna fun. Be, it's going to be a good, good time. Good time for good sure. Time. And the Mets are out, so it's an even better time. <laughs> <laughs> it's an even better time. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> but uh, Go Seattle. Yeah. Against Houston, absolutely. Jeez. Absolutely. Jeez. I'm gonna say I can talk about NASCAR. You want to talk, talk <laughs> about F1? Yeah. Well, yeah, Max Verstappen, Max the world boom. champion. Yeah, I know, boom. crazy. <laughs> Dan's like, I'm out. <laughs> I I watch NASCAR, but not enough to to follow it. <laughs> F1's think. where it's at. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you want to watch cars follow around e- each other in a track for single file for an hour and a half. I choose to watch Dude. it for three hours <laughs> <laughs> instead of ninety minutes. I choose to watch it for three. <laughs> around a course. What are you talking about? Did you see not yesterday's left, Roval race at Charlotte? A, that was a left hand turn the whole no, time. No, no, no. They took left and rights yesterday, oh, did they? but it was like F one. They just followed each other okay. for three hours. But anyways, at least um, they ride in the rain. That's true. That's when it gets interesting. Yeah. But you know, whatever. No, but um. Yeah, so it, it'll be fun. We'll kind of, like I said, or you guys mentioned, this is kind of like the pilot show, just kind of catching everybody up where you guys are, where we are, coming next week or whenever we, I think we're going to do this weekly. Um, we'll see. But uh, it will, you know, we'll talk more about everything. You know, we'll talk about the field hockey with Guilford. Like I kind of touched on that a little bit um, with volleyball as well, like things like that. And, Maybe eventually we'll get to the point where I can say, hey, you know, this is what we, like you guys kind of already did it when we talked about the recap. When I said something, you threw in your two cents of like, oh, well, Guilford Volleyball was really good. You know, yeah. they won, you know, things like that. So we, don't, know, we know a lot about other sports that are going on in season, particularly yeah. volleyball, particularly girls soccer. Mm-hmm. I mean, we didn't, we really we didn't, didn't even talk about them. Talk oh, about and, and there's, there's a lot of, a lot of, Good stuff going on in girls soccer right now. Right. So I mean, our our team is just uh, battled to a tie yeah. last week. I mean, yeah. right. and our girls team is close to. Um, I don't know if it's breaking the record or tying a, a record for most wins in a season, and they're they're nice. close to that and getting ready. I mean, hopefully, knock on wood, that they'll have a home playoff game because that would be. It's always fun to have a home playoff game, and it's nice to kind of like rejuvenate right. um, that program. I mean, Chelsea's doing a great job. Uh, yeah, for, she she does a great job for for what yeah. you know f- for where they've been over the last four years that she's been there. But right. I mean, yeah, like we didn't really talk. Yeah, we didn't talk real soccer, but or even honestly, we never even touched on the football stuff, which is you know, what we, which is crazy. Well, Bel- you know, again, Belmont Guilford BG football is is having GB a, football. You gotta get it right. They're, they're I mean, they're <laughs> dominant. GB, whatever it is, <laughs> they're they're do- they're dominating yeah, they're, Division <laughs> Two. I mean, which which honestly, I wanted to jump when we talked about the changing of an alignment with teams moving divisions and you know the idea of like okay a team moves up a division oh my gosh they suck <laughs> you know whatever mm-hmm. they went from dominating d3 now they're blech, in d2 guilford belmont football was kind of like that way they moved to d2 and everyone was like oh my goodness put us back in three we, yep. we're not good here but now here you are three or four years later 
Well, they're it, six and zero, oh, and, and it here we a, are. It takes a little bit of time to it to does, build to that adjust. program. I mean, yeah, Guilford and Belmont are two you know decently sized schools, so numbers wise, they had to be up there. And you know, with this being the first year of not necessarily being frowned upon to petition down, but it's frowned upon to petition down. Like right. you, you can come down, but you're not going to play. Right. I mean, right. you can have your regular season, which is fun. I mean, you get your 16 games guaranteed, but at the end of the day, like what we sign up for isn't just regular season games. Like we want that, we want that playoff push. That's we want right. that championship opportunity. And if you petition down, you don't get playoff don't, eligible, you, right? You're not that's playoff eligible. And, and I think I that's kind that. of, it's, 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 it's it's, it's good. good. It's good because it's pushing some of the teams that should be where they are to stay where yeah. they are. And I mean, I talked to, I don't know if you talked to Joe Atano over from Laconia, but he was, he was crushed yeah. going up into division two. And I, I absolutely loved playing Laconia yeah. for mm-hmm. the last few years, not just based on the fact that they're, you know, a close school to right. us, <laughs> but like the kids are great. Yeah. The atmosphere is always fun. Joe is a great guy, great coach. Yeah. And, like I follow him a little bit now through Division Two, and like I know that I'm closer to D four than D two anyway, so I don't ever have to worry <laughs> about going up there. But like it's the same, it's the same thing. Like you want to, you want to be competitive. Like nobody wants to go zero and fifteen or zero and sixteen. But right. at the same time, like it's it's some of those petition things are out of your hands. Right. Anyway, there's literally nothing you can do about it. Yeah. No, so. for sure. I mean, it's that. I mean, and again, I wrote that down as it. It you're took good. me forever to find this. Cause I was gonna say, I, are, you, well, are you good over there? <laughs> well, no, just like we were talking about, you know, things things coming up and you know, and or and or different sport kind of type things. So say, just for everyone listening at home, he's been on his phone for the last I don't know five, five minutes. minutes. Yeah. Five minutes. To, well, your reception out here is not great. Oh, anyway. interesting. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> how that gets blamed on it's me. It's a Wi-Fi and, shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, we we we've, we've talked a little bit about um, my my business outside oh, of all right of anyways stuff. folks have a good night <laughs> but those those you guys who are into sports cards and those those kinds of things so my my, my brother and i uh started a business uh, back in the end of february and now that's morphed into another business that my brother mm-hmm. has ventured in on onto but so it's called the monthly card show and it's <laughs> it's a legitimate live card show online that's cool so you have dealers who are who have signed on to this this show uh, coming in from all over the country, and the, the premise of it is is each dealer has their own table. They upload their photos of cards that they want. When the show goes live, you can talk to the dealer mm-hmm. while the show's going on. I want that card. Boom, great, sell it. Nice. So. Only. Sports cards could be and will be another topic. Yes, I only oh, took, yeah, I mean, only yeah. took two hours for him to plug and, it, but here real, we are. I mean, I can to piggyback <laughs> off of that. I mean, I have I have some buddies that are just yeah. they're they're not probably diehard to that extent, but I mean, I have a couple of people that have collected them, that buy them, that sell them. I mean, it's it's Huge. slowly coming right. back around into a, a more popular yeah. thing. Right? No, no it's, for sure. It's back. No, definitely. So the the DPP sports <laughs> yeah. sports show will be sponsored by by trade safe by, by, Trade-safe. by, Trade-safe. by hey, and his brother. Trade-safe. I mean, Trade-safe. hey, trade yeah. safe sports. As long as the checks don't bounce, I'm good with it. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> no, the monthly but, card show, November sixteenth. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It's honestly, free. it's free. It's free to go to. Free to attend. So, okay, just sign up. Nice. You know, you used to make us sign up for your stuff. No. Yeah, I, I do. Ch- I ch- <laughs> Payback. <laughs> Payback time is here. Yeah, now it's all free online there for us. Is. You know, it's good. I learned. You did. I learned. But anyways, no, I mean, um, the show will be fun, I think, for sure. And I think even if, like, la- the last five minutes was an example of how- what we might just want to do, it's like, here's a topic. Yep. Okay, you got a timer. Yeah. Go. And wherever it goes. Yep. You know, whether it be talking about the topic or sidetrack to a sidetrack mm-hmm. to a sidetrack and then bam. We could talk about F1 sports cards. Yeah, I mean, there you go. There you go. <laughs> uh, we talk If we talk too much about F- Formula One or anything, we're going to lose our audience yeah, and I, I think Dan. Be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I might have to backseat though on the yeah. old I was just say, Dan That's will be good. like, I'll be right back and he'll never come back. <laughs> <laughs> He'll watch uh, Drive to Survive on Netflix, and then yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll do some homework. I'll have to, yeah, I'll have to. Uh, I'll homework. have to watch up on it. You know? Listen, I know you have all this free time. Just go sit down. And yeah, I mean, we're <laughs> we're two or three weeks away from having a little bit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I mean, not that winter's slow, but no. What are you talking about? Winter's kind of slower. 
Yeah, I mean, I have I have some <laughs> baseball guys who are already chomping at the bit to yeah. to get after it again. So as soon as as soon as basketball's up, I'm sure the basketball coach won't be thrilled that our batting cage is going up at the yeah. gym. And <laughs> those guys will be hitting you yeah. know, a couple hours a week. So that's nice. crazy, but cool. Well, guys, like I said, thank you, or good luck this week. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and thanks for taking the time to join us here or join me, join us. <laughs> yeah, the voices in my head. It's okay. Yeah. Um, it's but uh, no, it, it was fun, and I'm excited to see where this goes. Cool. But anyways, for Coach Kern and Coach Foley, I'm Devin Poslesny. Thank you all so much for tuning in, and until we see each other for the next episode, have a great night, everybody. <laughs>